game. Tonight's theme, knock the Knicks off. New York's in town. The pack is poised. No love lost here. It's a time thing. For the Knicks, the clock's ticking fast. So close for so long now, and nobody's getting any younger, except the coach. The pressure is on in the Big Apple, and Jeff Van Gundy's Knicks need to get nasty for their run at postseason joy. The clock for the Raptors moves more slowly and is pressure free. This is all about building a future and the view looks pretty good from here. The pack is turning heads and that's turning on the fans. This Toronto franchise is ascending. Full speed ahead. Tonight, let's take on the Knicks. downtown Toronto at Skydome tonight as the Raptors who face the Knicks in the first ever game as members of the Toronto Huskies and it just seems like they haven't won since 0-6 against the New York Knicks they'll try and break that goose egg tonight here at Skydome John Saunders alongside Leo Routens the New York Knicks are a hot team right now they won four in a row including last night against Milwaukee a game they very nearly lost 16 point lead and a 15 nothing run by Milwaukee but then Larry Johnson took over well Larry Johnson has really been playing great basketball for the New York Knicks John shooting 58 percent over his last 11 games and does a lot of good things in the post and also he's been guarding the small forward as well as big guards at various times in games the Knicks also shot 60 percent as a team last night as well David Stoudemire trying to get the telecast there now Patrick Ewing of course the big man in the middle for the New York Knicks a frightening moment during a last night's game he had to leave the game momentarily for more on that let's join Laurie Belanger the New York Knicks arrived in town late last night after a win over the Milwaukee Bucks but Brendan it was a tough win leaving Patrick Ewing a little banged up yeah Sherman Douglas went to the basket and Patrick stepped up to stop him and they banged knees and uh, you could see he was in pain right away we called a timeout got him out of the game and he went back into our locker room with our trainers and as again we thought we had the game locked up we were winning comfortably and all of a sudden Milwaukee made a run and here comes Patrick he had been watching the game on television in the locker room and we put him right back in the game and he was a factor in us winning the game and uh, He's uh, always played with pain in his both knees, but he's going to play tonight. And uh, uh, we anticipate a very tough game with Toronto. They're a very tough team to play at home. Well, it's good news for the Knicks that uh, Patrick will be in the lineup tonight, but unfortunate for the Raptors, considering Oliver Miller will also not play in the game tonight. So we're looking for other big guys to step up tonight. All right, Laurie, thanks a lot. A respiratory problem for Oliver Miller. What do we look for tonight? Well, John, as always, our tips brought to you by Samsung. Our first one is walk the walk. Damon Stoudemire was very outspoken after the Raptors lost to Boston, and he wants the team to define themselves. You can see Toronto's the only team in the league that has a better record of, uh, against teams of above 500 then below 500 and Toronto really has to make sure that they take care of business but tonight the Knicks will be a tough test a fine line is our second tip and you have to be talking about Patrick Ewing a lot of people thought his career would be on the decline but he is playing great basketball and especially tough on a recent West Coast road trip. You look at Pat Ewing's numbers since the All-Star break, 22 points, almost 12 boards a game, 47% from the field, just playing outstanding basketball, and without a doubt, the go-to guy and a leader for the Knicks. And our third tip, Child's play. Chris Child's is gonna be missing his fourth straight game with an injured wrist, but you have the matchup at the big guard position. Doug Christie, who's vying for most improved player in the NBA against Allen Houston, who was brought over for big bucks and is playing a big time game right now. It should be a terrific matchup. We'll see the starting lineups when we come back. Now one of the referees for tonight's game, one of the men to have tossed Leo Routens out of a basketball game. More when we come back. Go to the net. Now connecting to the NBA. 
Welcome to NBA.com, the official website of the NBA. You have gained full access to all 29 teams and their players. Check out nightly scores and stats, read the latest NBA news, visit the NBA theater and relive spectacular plays. Browse the NBA store, even enter a live chat session with an NBA player or coach. The online world of the NBA, only at NBA.com. IBM Syncpad, 365-ös. Az bizony. It could be no other. Feel the track point. Feast your eyes on the screen. Can we swing it, boss, huh? <sighs> Meglepően olcsó. Yeah, that's my boss. What a guy, huh? Welcome back to Sky Dome, everyone. John Saunders, Leo Routens, Lori Belanger, all set to bring you the Raptors against the New York Knicks. The Knicks, a perfect six and zero against the Raptors. November the 14th, when the Raptors were up in New York, they had a 12-point lead in the third quarter against the Knicks and wound up losing that one as well. So uh, a chance for them to redeem themselves, plus get rid of the goose egg. And Toronto also forced 24 turnovers for the New York Knicks in that game John so Toronto has a lot of success in forcing the play with their full court pressure for the starting lineups let's join Herbie Kuhn. Ladies and gentlemen good evening the Toronto Raptors would like to welcome you the NBA's greatest fans to Skydome for tonight's contest featuring the New York Knicks and your Toronto Raptors. Ladies and gentlemen the Raptors are pleased to welcome Mr. Rob Holmes to tonight's game. Rob, who will be announcing the visiting team lineup, is attending this evening's game with the group from Bryce Waterhouse. So, Rob, with the intros for the Knicks. From Virginia Union, a six foot nine forward, number 34, Charles Oakley. From UNLV. A six foot seven forward, number two, Larry Johnson. From Georgetown, a seven foot center, number 33, Patrick Ewing. From Tennessee, a six six guard, number 20, Allen Houston. And from Florida State, a six two guard, number 21, Charlie Ward. Jeff Van Gundy's squad playing very well this year. 44 and 16, 18 and 11 on the road. They won four straight, as I mentioned before, in five of their last six. And Van Gundy, the youngest coach in the NBA. Right now, let's rejoin Herbie Kuhn for the introductions of your Toronto Raptors.
The Raptors starting lineup brought to you by the Toronto Star. And there's head coach Daryl Walker, who's had a tremendous year, 20 wins already and 21 in total they had all of last year. Now, Leo Routen had a problem with Dick Bavetta. He tossed him out of a Jersey League game. And, and on Valentine's Day, Leo, Dick Bavetta said to you, where is my gift? And there's a gift. That's right, Dick told us we had we missed Christmas, we missed his birthday, but we did not miss Valentine's Day. We just waited for the right opportunity for our favorite official in the NBA. <laughs> All right, for a guy who tossed you right now, it's time for Destination NBA. Brought to you by Air Canada, the Pacers at Cleveland, San Antonio. They'll be here on Friday. They're facing the Bulls tonight. Minnesota hosting Detroit. Dallas so still looking Utah. for that 30th win, John. Oh, I know. Portland is at Phoenix. P.J. Carlissimo is still around, although some reports had him getting fired. Golden State in Houston, and Denver is at Sacramento. There's a look at Jeff Van Gundy, whose squad is 44 and 16. Don't forget, stay tuned for your chance to win big in our Blockbuster Raptorama contest. Watch and wait during today's game for a number to roll across the screen. Be caller number 33. Just think Patrick Ewing. To win tickets to our next ah. game and a ride on the Raptorama wheel for unbelievable prizes. Grand prize, a trip to see the Chicago Bulls play the Raptors in Chicago. Why didn't you just come out and say, just think of Georgetown? Come on. That's what you were that's thinking. True. That's Pat what you wanted you to say. say. Come on. That's Alonzo Mourning. Jaheidi White's wearing that number this year. We are underway, and Patrick Ewing goes up and finds Charlie Ward. Patrick Ewing, we talked about the fact that he got hurt, hurt his knee, but he's not one of these guys that's going to take a night off. If he can play, he will be there. He's one of these true hard workers in the league, a real blue-collar guy. And the Raptors' good defense forces the first turnover of the game. Well, I mentioned the Raptors did force 29 turnovers in New York in their last meeting, and they had a lot of success. The one thing they cannot do is get into a half-court game with the Knicks. It has to be an up-tempo, full-pressure ball game. Charlie Ward gives up the shot to Allen Houston, and that's why. Now, he's been playing great basketball. Last six games, 56% from downtown. And that's why they brought him in, paid him the big bank, 56 million, John. Buy a few lunches with that. Yes, it will. And one of the reasons why Hubert Davis ended up with the Raptors. Now, the only thing is a lot of people are misinterpreting what's happening. Nice dish there, Stoudemire. But people are misinterpreting a lot of things in terms of Allen Houston. He wasn't getting a lot of shots early, which a lot of folks are critical of, and they should be, because you bring a guy in to pay him that kind of money, you have to give him the ball. But now, lately, when their team is playing well, a lot of times John Starks gets the minutes in the fourth quarter, and it's not a knock on Allen Houston, but if Starks is playing well and he's going good, he's also an outstanding defensive player, then you let him go. It just doesn't change the rhythm in the game, so you keep going with it. So, uh, just fitting in real well with New York. Well, Houston, Talk about his scoring averages. He averaged 12 in November, just under 15 in December, over 15 in January, and 18 in February. So he's gotten better as the season progressed. And Pat Ewing, I think, is developing a lot more confidence in him by looking for him, throwing it out once that ball comes into the post. You see the Raptors jumping right away in that full court pressure. Charlie Ward into Larry Johnson. Oakley from the baseline knocks it down. Charles, Charles Oakley is another guy who's really playing well. And the leader of this team defensively. He really makes things happen defensively with his work on the weak side, helping his teammates out. Christie oh, open for a three, launches it, and cashes in. That's one of the things Doug Christie has to do, John, is really make Allen Houston work in the defensive end. Start having a focus in on guarding instead of taking his, doing the job offensively. Ward again to Oakley. Swings it to Houston. Moves in, finds Oakley again on the baseline, misses that time, and Damon Stoudemire up for the rebound, was over top of Larry Johnson, but it's still Nick's ball. It's very important that everybody stay in the rebound. New York is a tremendous rebounding team. A lot of big bodies, and they really go after the basketball. Think about, he's watched Patrick Ewing throw that one up. The, it's an uh, offensive foul, but Damon Stoudemire with seven rebounds was tied with Carlos Rogers for the lead against the Celtics. And that's one of the reasons why he stormed out of the locker room. I mean, the effort just wasn't there. Absolutely. And Damon Stoudemire, again, is not one to be critical of his teammates. He's critical of the way the team played 
himself included, he felt that everybody can't use the excuse of being young, can't use the excuse of coming back from a West Coast road trip. They have to play hard, they have to show up, and that way you define your team, that people know when every time, every time you step on the court against Toronto Raptors, you are gonna be in for a rough night. And he was really upset about the fact a lot of Celtics, a team that has no business laughing, was laughing at, the, at their team during that course of the game. Allen Houston. No good. Look at Christie up for it. Finally grabs it. Stoudemire. Over the top of Charlie Ward. A little long. And it's Knicks basketball. It'll be an interesting thing to watch the matchup between Stoudemire and Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward has some trouble against very, very quick guards. He's fouled out of back-to-back -back games against the 76ers and Allen Iverson. In fact, Iverson got both Brooks and Wolf. Right. I remember that game. He was unbelievable. Well, one thing about Charlie Ward right now, he is playing very good basketball. Charlie Ward's playing with a lot more confidence than he did early in the year when he started while Charles was hurt then. He really wanted a foul there. Stoudemire thinks about the three. Pass Ward back up for Popeye Jones. Both the line jumper he is just a little off the mark. And it goes over to the Knicks. We're stuck on fives. Raptors getting some good scoring opportunities, John. They're just not making their shots right now, starting out a little bit cold. Talk about that rebounding advantage. Another statistic that, wow, he is so smooth on that jump shot. One of the things that's deceiving about Allen Houston, he looks like he's not trying. He's just a very smooth player, very smooth player. He works very hard. I think he learned a lot about playing defense in the NBA, playing with Doug Collins in Detroit last year. He really improved his game and took pride in the defensive end of the court. Oakley with the help, a nice job. Shot clock is down to six as Popeye lets it go. And again, off the mark and over the glass. And those are shots Popeye Jones normally drops in without any hesitation whatsoever. We've seen him miss two shots right now, but uncharacteristic for Popeye Jones, who drains those with regularity. And again, the pressure on the inbound. Patrick Ewing has to handle it. Houston can't lose Walt Williams. Oakley loses the ball, though. And you can see the tempo of the game. You can feel it right now. It's a slow game. Even though Toronto's trying to apply some pressure early, they're not really going all out, but it's a very slow game. And that's, in, in, without a doubt, in New York's favor. Allen Houston got that shot off, but Doug Christie travels to the ball there. Christie made him work so hard to get free, and that's what caused the missed shot. Absolutely, and that's what you have to do. You really got to make Allen Houston put the ball on the floor. And here we get a look at Doug Christie. Good call by Dick Bavetta calling the walk as opposed to the foul. Chasing after Charlie Ward. And I guess that would make Damon a linebacker because Charlie Ward was a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback at Florida State. Good job, Popeye, getting back in there to scoop up the board. Walt Williams down the lane, dumps it off. Rogier back out to Stoudemire. The three-pointer is good. Nice thing about that pass, John, it was a quick pass, a bullet pass from Rozier to Stoudemire, which gave him time to get the shot before the defense could ever react. Oh, good hands by Cliff Rozier. And then takes it up the court, and the pass was just too far in front of Walt Williams. A little over-anxious. Cliff Rozier doing a great job defensively with the quick hands. I've often talked about his quick feet. And then get it up the court. You don't want to panic and rush in that situation. Basketball is a funny game. Even though you want to get up and down and run like Toronto does, it's a game of quickness, it's a game of speed, but you don't rush. The Knicks have turned it over four times already. The Raptors almost on that pace. The Knicks are turning the ball over a lot this season, John. They're last in the league at 18 and a half turnovers a game, which is very unusual for them. Oh, what a dump down by Charlie Ward and a great finish by Ewing. I think Pat Ewing's knee looked pretty good on that play, John. Now, you know what that dunk is like. First no, no, I, I that, have right? no idea. I don't remember <laughs> Pat Ewing dunking on us when we play. <laughs> we'll have to look up the old films. Uh, I, I do can, mean, hey, I do I can remember. Uh, I'm not even going to get into that, but I'll bring a little film for you if you'd like to see one. Ewing with that rebound. Ward into Larry Johnson. Johnson loses the handle. Out Excellent of bounds. Job. See, as soon as Johnson got the ball, he's surrounded by four white shirts. 
Good job by Toronto taking the move away from LJ. The Raptors down by one as Pat McEwing puts the exclamation point on the pass. My son Michael was born. And now, a special message. Say no to smoking. Say no to alcohol. Say no to red meat. Say no to rock music. Say no. Your rules are really beginning to annoy me. It takes more than big guns to save the world. It takes the bad attitude. Nobody draws until this hits the ground. Kurt Russell, Escape from L.A. Draw. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. The greatest collection of NBA players and moments are together for the first time on one commemorative home video. NBA at 50, hosted by Denzel Washington, takes you from Mikan to Magic and beyond. Relive the best passes, slam dunks, rebounds, and championship moments whenever you want. You'll experience the emotion felt by these great players for their team and their sport. Everything that we didn't have in talent, we made up for in determination and just sheer will. Plus, you'll get a special bonus feature on the 50 greatest players in NBA history. NBA at 50, yours for only $19.95. If you love the game, then your love affair will never end with this special video you'll watch again and again. It's the ultimate keepsake for fans of every age. NBA at 50, order yours now. Order now. Get this NBA at 50 collector's pin as part of this exclusive TV offer. Call 1-800-596-9977. We're back at Sky Dome, and the pen is hot, John. Our AST computer court sense replay are going to show you how to move that basketball and get it out to your shooter. Watch as Walt Williams makes a little penetration, finds Rozier. Now, Rozier really doesn't have the play here. Hold it right there. You see the defender comes over, so, so Cliff Rozier quickly throws that basketball out, puts a lot on it right to Damon Stoudemire. That way, no way Charlie Ward has enough time to get out there to defend the shot. But if that shot is thrown, that pass is thrown softly, or there's a lob on that, Charlie Ward recovers, there's no play. The quick, crisp pass makes that play. 15 seconds left for the Knicks on their possession clock. 6.33 to go in the first quarter, a 9-8 Knicks lead. Charlie Ward comes to the ball. Hey John, my high school coach used to tell me something, Dan Pernagas, I'm sure he's maybe watching right now, he used to say, zing the basketball. Anytime you throw that ball, put something on it, zing the ball, make sure you get it to who you want it to quickly. Now that wasn't a zing, but that was a heck of a shot right there. Soft you touch with the jump hook. Four points now for you. Christie in the post with Allen Houston. Backs him in. Turns away, leans in. Ewing, that's going to be goaltending. Now see, that was a great play by Doug Christie. He put that ball on the backboard. That ball had no chance of going in. No way was that going in. But the fact that he got it to the glass quickly and Ewing was already in motion to block it, he gets the goaltending call because once it touches glass, you no longer can touch the ball. It actually looked like as he went up and saw Ewing coming, quickly tipped it to the glass. And that's what you want to do. You want to get that ball. Anytime you have a big man coming at you, get the ball to the glass as quickly as you can. Allen Houston, quick release, short this time. Christie around Houston, and Allen Houston got a little hand check in there. See, Doug Christie's really making Allen Houston work right now. He's looking to take him on a perimeter. He's got his jump shot, taking him down low in the post. See, right here, good job swinging that ball across his body and going right at Allen Houston, who had his hand on him, and you're not allowed to use the hands to slow the defender down. Look at that. Oh, what an nice aggressive move right there. Christie and Ewing again for the goal. To, wait, is this the 1982 <laughs> North Carolina Georgetown Championship? Ah, oh, come on, man. The guy's goaltending out there. What are you doing? Like four, the first four Carolina shots yeah. he goaltended on? Hey, that's a great, that's a great thing to do, though, John. If you're an opposing center, you can see Doug Christie getting that ball up high. Remember Jack Donahue, who coached Lou Alcindor, then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in high school told Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, or again, Lou Alcindor at the time, go out and make sure you block the first shot of the game. I don't care where it's taken from, make sure you block the first shot of the game, so then from that point on, the offense looks for you every time they make a move to the basket. Pat Ewing obviously showing a little bit of that, going out and attacking Doug Christie every time he takes the ball to hoop it. You can see Doug 
What's great about this is he goes aggressively, gets that ball up high. You know what, John? That was close. From that angle, that was close. From where we were sitting, I thought it was definitely a goaltending. You know, it's funny. We mentioned that 82 Carolina Georgetown final. You're just amazing at the guys that are in, were in that game. Oh, absolutely. James Worthy, Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins, Sam Perkins. Patrick Ewing, Sleepy Floyd, David Wingate. I mean, that's just an unbelievable group of guys. Yeah, I don't know how that Georgetown team lost to Syracuse that year at all <laughs> with all the talent that they had. <laughs> Oh boy, somebody must have the flu. Larry Johnson finally grabs it. Hands everywhere, just swarming. Allen Houston just gets it across mid-court. Now Charlie Ward is double teamed. Larry Johnson lets it fly. Well short. Comes right to Walt Williams. That's not a real good shot for Larry Johnson. He hasn't really touched the ball. Got to get a little bit more active. Rozier, nice find to Walt Williams. Walt pulls up inside with ah. three-point arms. Rozier, what an effort. Up ah. high again, no good, but a terrific effort by Clifford Rozier. Finding the offensive foul, his ball foul on Toronto. Looks like Clifford Rozier, but what an effort by Rozier and Jones. You can see, watch Popeye Jones come underneath. You see Pat, Pat, Patrick Ewing is occupied with Cliff Rozier. Popeye Jones sneaks in on the baseline. Popeye told me he loves to come in from the baseline up to get his rebounding position because everybody forgets about you from that angle. Popeye got hit with the foul and he had to check out of the game, but a tremendous rebounding effort by Rozier and Popeye Jones. John, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, and we'll show that it's a great offensive rebounding technique that is used by the best offensive rebounders in the game. The baseline, under and out move to get position. Shot clock is at one, and they don't get it off. 24 second violation against the Knicks. Good job by Cliff Rozier to hold his ground. One thing about Cliff Rozier. Talk about his feet, talk about his hands, how he uses his quickness. But he's a very physical player. He does not mind mixing it up and banging it. And you look at it, it matched up against Pat Ewing. Cliff Rozier gives up a lot of pounds, but he uses what he has to the best of his ability. Christie. Backs Houston in again. That was an amazing battle going on between Christie and Houston. Well, Darrell Walker's yelling, Pat Ewing's illegal. He's hanging out in the middle, just waiting to help. Stoudemire knocks it down over top of Ewing. That's a great point by Walker, John. Darrell, uh, Patrick Ewing's just kind of hanging around the middle to see what shot he can change. And the officials have to keep an eye on that, but another defensive effort by the Raptors. The law for Marcus Camby goes right between his hands. That's an excellent look. Oakley knocks it down. Charles Oakley. Marcus Camby had a real nice game in New York at 29 points at the Garden. Remember, he made some real strong moves. He went at Ewing, he went at Oakley, Buck Williams, tried to dunk on everybody back in that game. John Starks comes into the game. Substitution now you're going to see Duck Christie's going to have a little Number different three, posture. It'll we'll be interesting to see if he will go and attack John Starks the same way. Houston. John Starks obviously has kept around in New York for his defensive ability. He's a real tough defender. He will get in your face. And he's already talking. He's already started to talk to Doug Christie. Let him know that, hey, party's over, Doug. The also, stopper's in now. Also coming in, the rookie out of Syracuse. John Wallace. Ah, we should have some fine play at this point. Christy does go at Starks. Walt Williams is open for three. A little long. Oakley has the rebound. The big knock on John Wallace has been his attitude and his defense. The Knicks are not happy with the way he's been playing defense. Offensively, he could definitely play, but defense is a problem. So we get a look at John Wallace. Has to shape up a little bit to be a big factor with the Knicks. We've got a one-point game here at Skydome. We'll get back here after this. The world is such a fascinating place. How do you explain it? For generations, families have turned to the World Book Encyclopedia. Now there's World Book Multimedia from IBM. With 22 volumes on two CDs, connected to a select library of websites, an owl will take over the old nest of a hawk or a crow. It's not just a place to look things up, but a new way to learn. Two escaped convicts. Sure, I did a run in the first 
place. So people start shooting at me, I run. Are about to form a partnership. We marry, baby. Based on close friends. These people are trying to kill you. Mutual acquaintances. My house is go, 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 go. But I'm warning you, it's messy. And $25 million. I don't want that. Where the hell did you get a key for the cops? My ex-husband. He's a cop. Fled. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Everybody knows that it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. March of Dimes research helped save my son's life. That's why I joined. And you should too. Sign up for March of Dimes Walk America and walk for someone you love. Forget every Sunday on CFRB, get your chance to talk with head coach Daryl Walker. That's at 8 o'clock on CFRB, 10 10 a.m. Now, in the building today, some special kids and guests of Marcus Camby. Camby's Kids, a program initiated by Marcus and Nike to host a group of kids at a Raptors game. Camby's Kids. Chances to see their hero out there right now. Patrick Ewing spins. Rogier comes in there. Body hit the block and swatted the ball. And John Starks, being a nice guy, chasing down the court to pick it up for Dick Pavetta. You don't see that anymore. You know, you got to appreciate that effort by John Starks. But I'll tell you what, Pat Ewing really had to put up a tough shot. You see right here, he's coming in. Cliff Rozier did everything he could to change that shot. Duck Christie did a pretty good job of helping out as well. You have to make the big fella work. Nothing easy for Pat Ewing, because I'll tell you what, he's got to be feeling it a little bit as well as he's been playing. He's been doing the job on a glass, scoring the numbers and the points and coming off a long road trip similar to Toronto's. Have to be feeling a little bit. Patrick misses both. It was a uh, lane violation. Lane violation. Dick Pavetta telling all the players and let him release the ball before you get inside the key. I'll tell you what, if you really pay really close attention, I've got a camera on it. Those lane violations almost 50% of the time are free throws taken. An advantage guys are trying to gain. No, you have to. And everybody's trying to go one another into the lane a little quicker, trying to get that edge. Traveling call against Walt Williams. Get a look at the wizard trying to put that ball on the floor, and there he is. Move that pivot foot before he put the ball down. Now, at some point in time, John, we've got to have to. I don't mean to be busted on one of my boys from Syracuse, but John Wallace has got the funkiest sneakers on. I've seen him in a long time. Holy mackerel. I don't know what they are, but I'll tell you what. Take them off, John. You're embarrassing the school. <laughs> they look like something you would see at Radio City Music Hall with the Rockettes. <laughs> This one of my Syracuse boys, you know how much this hurts, John. Huh? Or they look like something you should wear on the moon. <laughs> Sponsored by NASA. Christie trying to lose Brooks. Shot clock is down to five. It's at two as Christie gets it up and gets it off. Oh, he is so good in that post. Loves playing with his back to the basket. You know, when he had that ball, John, he did not panic. He knew exactly two what he was going to do to get that shot off. Already nine quarter. points for Doug Christie. John Wallace up on the baseline, gets fouled. There's a look at those shoes. Well, we're going to talk more about those in a little while. I mean, my goodness. I mean, he's with the Syracuse. Can't you, like, ask him what's up with those things? If I'm not mistaken, the alumni has already sent out a letter. <laughs> Denying him entry into the R Elite Club. Not only did he go to Syracuse, but he took his name out of the draft after his junior league, junior year and stayed in for a senior year. So he's got four years of an education to pick those shoes up. Well, obviously didn't learn a lot. Obviously did not learn a lot. And again, I, I this hurts. This is one of my boys here. Now, one of the things you saw, John, when he got in the game there, he took that shot. And as we were seeing one of the all-time power forwards in the NBA, Buck Williams. Go play, go play. But John Wallace, the problem with John, along with his defense, 
has been the fact that he's a tweener. He's, a, he's between a power forward and a small forward, and as a result, teams aren't sure where to play him. Ah, very good. Look at that brutal. Syracuse with a first score. round win in the Big East tournament. Now, Syracuse lost over the weekend and went from being a possible four seed to the number eight seed. As a result, they had to play today. And the top three teams, as you see the foul there. <laughs> that was an unbelievable effort. Top three teams in the Big East um, did not have to play today, and those teams were Boston College, Villanova, and Georgetown. You're just waiting. You're Enough just said. waiting to get that in there. Enough said. All right, we got Charles Oakley on the line. We saw Marcus Camby go right over his back. One thing Charles Oakley will do is get great rebounding position. Here's a guy, here's a great example of what hard work is all about. Not a leaper, not particularly quick, extremely strong and very smart. He will bang and bump and do whatever he can and play with great position. And his tenacity in the offensive glass is incredible. He just keeps going and going. And he's also on the cover of GQ, so hey, does it get any better than that? <laughs> So the Knicks have a two-point lead thanks to Oakley's free throws. And now it's Scotty Brooks who shares some duties with Charlie Ward. Childs isn't playing. There's Marcus Canby knocking down the shot to tie it back up at 18. And Damon Stoudemire created that by splitting the double team between Brooks and Buck Williams and found Marcus wide open. Damon has really been distributing the basketball well. He's been doing a great job of getting everybody involved. Sean Wright, who I expected to see tonight with Patrick doing in. Nice dump underneath. Canby tries the circus shot, doesn't get it, but it'll go to the line. Marcus went up any way he could just to get up quickly. And got fouled and almost made the shot. Avery Johnson and the San Antonio Spurs coming down Friday. And it shows you how tough things have been on the Spurs that we can't put the Admiral David Robinson up there. He's been injured for just about every game. Can't put the Admiral, can't put Sean Elliott, can't put Dominique Wilkins. Could have put Vinny up there. <laughs> but San Antonio is in at 7 on Friday. Sean Rasper getting ready to check in. Your cousin, Vinny? That's right. Your next chance to bring the entire family with the family fan packs will be Sunday against Vancouver. Canby gives the Raptors a two point lead. See Scotty Brooks with the basketball. Hasn't played a lot when Chris Childs is in, but had a real nice game against Milwaukee last night. Nice pass there. Wallace to Buck Williams. Excellent job by John Wallace. Hey, what's that, Mark? What's that, Mark? I really think it's a great opportunity for a rookie like John Wallace to be in the environment of New York with Buck Williams, Charles Oakley, and Pat Ewing right now. Oakley is getting singled out for illegal defense. But to be around those guys that are, again, blue-collar workers, these guys have been pros for an awful long time. And, and when you talk about pros, these guys are pros. They come to play every day. For John Wallace, that can only be a positive effect in his career if he looks at them and takes advantage of the situation he's in to learn. Jerron, now quickly double team as the help comes. Gamby is open. And Marcus gets called for the travel. But we're seeing a lot of travel calls this evening. But I have to say, most of them are right on the money. Everybody's dragging the pivot foot a little bit. Substitution for the Knicks, re-entering the game. Houston comes back in for Brooks. So now John Starks matched up with Damon Stoudemire. Brooks was struggling and gets that press. Well, he doesn't have a lot of size. When you got big guys like Marcus Camby coming over to trap, it becomes very difficult to pass out of it. As a result, you get a bigger backcourt. Now with Starks and Houston, you have a very big backcourt. You're looking at two guys, 6'4 and 6'6, six, six, and very physical. And you get the call on Stoudemire. With the handshake. Right? Stoudemire trying to keep Allen Houston from getting inside. That's one area I think Allen Houston really has to try to do a little bit more of getting inside. He's a big body at 6'6", and he's got a good build on him, very physical, and you can see right there. And I'll, well, I'll tell you what, I thought that was pretty good defense, John. Davis Stoudemire had the forearm out, and he did a good job of just not allowing in, not allowing Allen Houston to get inside. Nick's struggling a little bit down there at the free throw line. We saw Patrick Ewing miss a couple, and now Allen Houston, who's an 81% free throw shooter. His last 15 games, 90% from the line. 
misses them both, and Sharon right for the rebound. The Raptors have to get one up here. And we're seeing an identical call. And Darrell Walker just looked at Dave Bavetta and said, thank you. Because he was arguing a point. Hey, you just called Davis Stoudemire at the other end for a nothing call on Allen Houston. You've got to call this. And sure enough, Dick Bavetta blew his whistle and made the call. And now Davis Stoudemire will get to the line. Starks is really upset. Look at this. Right now, Starks is playing. And that's pretty good defense right there. He never had his hand. He had his forearm there. A little bump, which is okay. But that's exactly the same calls we saw at the other one. So as long as you get the same calls, no complaints. Come back, Lowe, come back. No, again, the denial, the long pass for Buck Williams. Marcus Canby over to break it up. And then out of bounds. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of one Timeout on the floor. The Raptors leading by two is Canby and crew showing a terrific effort here early at Skydome. Hey, basketball fans, now you can try NBA Inside Stuff magazine free and get this authentic NBA t-shirt. Get inside the locker room and the huddle. Call now to get your free trial issue. If you like it, you'll get five more issues, a whole year of NBA action for over 30% off the cover price. And you'll take home the t-shirt free with your paid subscription. NBA Inside Stuff, call now for your free trial. Check one, two. Try changing the channel. <laughs> for the motion picture invasion of Independence Day. We must launch a counteroffensive with a full nuclear strike. Over American soil. If we don't strike soon, there may not be much of an America left to defend. Independence Day. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. That's what I call a close encounter. At the end of the first quarter, the Raptors lead the Knicks 22-20 here on City TV and the new VR as the Raptors look to end the Knicks four-game winning streak and get a victory for them against them for the first time. Not shooting very well. No, but one thing you've got to do is get the Knicks to a lower percentage right now. Coming off a 60% game last night, you see they're shooting the ball very well, trying to do a little bit better from three. Free throws about even. The and everything else about even. So Toronto really just has to make sure that they make New York work a little bit harder and drop that percentage down below. Charlie Ward into the game. Sean Raspert now in at point guard. And as Marcus Canby launches the shot off the mark, chases down his own miss. He tries to save it going out of bounds, but Charlie Ward chased it down. John Stark, pump fake around former teammate Hubert Davis. Shot no good. Restford almost had it. On the floor, Sharon Wright chases it down. Sharon Wright did not play against Boston. Oh, what a pass! Great pass. Now, was that a guard or was that a big man? My goodness. Marcus Camby doing his Damon Stoudemire impersonation. His first foul, the game team foul number one. Nice look down low. Check this out. The big man with the look away and the one hand. Oh, right between the hands of John Wallace. The field goal is up. It's good. Right between Wallace's arms and missed the top of his head by about half an inch. Nice pass. Seven feet tall. Throwing the one-handed look away. 
Multi-dimensional. Friend and colleague Dick Vitale might say. Now with pressure again, Wallace finds Charlie Ward and Camby's quickly all over him. Starks to Wallace. It's down from Buck Williams to Charles Oakley. See, New York did a great Charles job Oakley. attacking a pressure. They got the ball in the middle to Wallace. And once that ball's in the middle, you create opportunities. Oh, oh, shot right there. That's a big time move by Marcus Camby. And soft touch. Get playing a lot like a small man right there with the mobility, getting out on the break, and getting that ball up. Look at this defensive matchup now. What's going on here, John? We got Camby on Ward. Charlie will be putting up any shots against. Well, of course you. Well, and that's what happens when you go over a seven footer and you're only 6 2. And he was down. He had down with the Grab legs. The he was ready to play. He was ready in case there was penetration. But check this move out. Marcus Camby now playing the point for the Toronto Raptors. And Hubert Davis and Sean Respert officially the backcourt on the floor right now, but you're right. Camby's doing a lot of point guard like. Handens out here. Oh, he's causing fits for Charles Oakley, too, because he's pulling him away from the basket. Oakley doesn't want to get out there. Carlos Rogers glides in. Nice job, Char Charlie Ward was right there just waiting for Carlos Rogers. All he had to do there, John, was just stop and pull up and take the shot. You don't have to go all the way. Just stop right in there and pull up, and you got a wide open jumper or a little drop off pass to Sharon Wright, wide open under the bucket. You can't make up your mind ahead of time what you want to do. The defense dictates your move. You can't just say, I'm going to put the ball forward, go all the way. If you see the defender, you have to try to react to that. Pressure is causing some problems for the New York Knicks. Or to Larry Johnson. Starks and Carlos Rogers on John Starks. Now Carlos Rogers on the switch. Larry Johnson turns and a Larry tough Johnson. shot and gets it. Very tough shot. Larry Johnson likes that fadeaway. He gets real low, tries to create a little bit of room with his big body, and then he just jumps back. It's a pretty good hang time on Rasper, double team. Larry Johnson comes over on Sharon Wright. Oh, Sharon bumping. Oh, nice job by Carlos. This is a fun game to watch right now. And it's also starting to become a little quicker pace game, which again is in favor of Toronto. Larry Johnson working on Marcus Camby. Can't get around him. Starks now. Loses some space between him and Davis. Camby with the rebound. You can see Hubert Davis, the way he played that, John, he jumped towards the middle as Starks put the ball on the floor, knowing that Starks likes to get into the middle and pull up. As a result, Starks had to back off and shoot a shot he wasn't particularly looking for. Drives to Marcus Camby gets pushed, and he'll go to the line. 9.13 until halftime. Let's join Lori Belanger. Thanks, John. Well, after what seemed to be the longest road trip in history and a lot of teasing about Blockbuster Route Ram, we're back and we're going to spin the big wheel today. Leo will also review the halftime highlights and I'll head to the locker room to talk with Coach Daryl Walker. Thank you, Lori. And one of these times, maybe we can get Leo to actually spin on the Raptor Rama wheel. Substitution for the John, you know how much chance you have of that happening? I'll wear a pair of Hoyer shorts <laughs> before I spin on that wheel. Oh, boy. You see Walter McCarty checking into the game. Another one of those first-round draft choices of the Knicks. They had three in the first round. The other one, well, of course, it was Wallace McCarty and Dante Jones, who's been injured throughout the year. Dante Jones has never really had a chance to step on the court. Walter McCarty gives them a different look. He's 6-11, but plays a perimeter game. He likes to shoot the threes. And very active in terms of going to the offensive glass. Starts to Buck Williams and Camby. Thought he had the block. You know what's interesting about the three first-round draft choices in the Knicks? Not only three in the first round, but they all played in the Final Four last year. That's right. That's right, Mississippi State, Kentucky, and Syracuse were all there. And Marcus Candy played there as well with UMass. That was the fourth team. Of the three, I think John Wallace has the most potential. I'm not really sold on McCarty in terms of his physical ability to play. He's very thin, and again, he plays a very perimeter game. If you look at Marcus Candy, he'll mix it up. He'll get a lot more inside, 
and try to take advantage of a size level where McCarty really plays like a perimeter 15, player. And there's Dante Christy. Jones from Mississippi State. Who Syracuse had to beat to get to, to the, the championship game. against Walden McCarty in Kentucky. Right. McCarty actually might be a good fit with the Raptors because of the way they play in Kentucky. That's a great point, John. I think with New York, he struggles to find his game because they're a half-court team and he's really not going to fit in that. But the way Kentucky played, look at that. You've got a 6'11 guy covering a big guard, Doug Christie. Actually, Doug Christie's in a small forward position right now, but still the 6'11 guy playing him, and that's where he fits in, much like we've seen Marcus Candy play with Toronto. Starks out of the double team. Chicken wing on the back as he tried to wrap his way to the basket, so that's an offensive foul. You can see the power of John. He'll play like a power forward. If you don't know how tall he is, you think he's much bigger, the way he takes the ball to the basket. But then you realize he is kind of a small forward. He has to cover guys quicker, and that's when he gets hurt. Christie tries to drive on the card. He does and gets fouled. What's great about that move, John, he waited. Doug Christie, watch what happens here. He waits, he hesitated, he waited for the weak side defense to move away, and did it move. Tremendous job of reading the defense. Watch right here, he's looking at the weak side defense. As soon as John Wallace goes away from the weak side, that's when Doug Christie penetrates and makes that move. Excellent reading on the offensive end by Doug. Substitution for the Knicks, re-entering the game, number 33, Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing checks back in as John Wallace goes John back Wallace. to the bench. <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy not big on playing rookies. He's been very outspoken against that, saying, hey, there's not a lot of rookies that have been instrumental in leading teams to championships in the NBA over the years. And Jeff Van Gundy says, I'm playing the stats. I do not like to rely on rookies. Starks with a long pass for Buck Williams and nice kick save and a beauty by Sharon Wright. Well, if it wasn't for Pele in the back right there, the Knicks would have had a slam dunk as Pat Ewing was wide open. So they do get a fresh 24 second clock. Charlie Ward dumps it down to Patrick Ewing. Sharon Wright out on him quickly. Try to bump him and move him. That's a tough pass. A oh, nice job. Rogers up at the block, but then you really got him back. Good help by Carlos Rogers. See the strength of Pat Ewing. Seven now for you. Good help and, and a nice job by Sharon Wright to hold his ground without fouling. The Christie. Oh, oh. Got the loose ball foul. Looks like it's against Sharon Wright. Let's check in with Lori Belanger. Thanks, John. Well, I'm uh, with an injured Raptor tonight, and it's not one of the players, it's the mascot. Ryan, the mascot injured himself last and there, Monday night against Boston when he went down on the mini trampoline. Sorry, Raptor, I know you're having a really hard time. He, he's on the IR. He'll be back soon. Let's get back to John. Oh, man. These, you know, these mascots these days, I remember a time, you remember this, Leo, a mascot would not miss a game. Absolutely. He'd have to have What's a broken three leg? broken legs. Come on. And we know mascots have four legs, so. Hey, Carlos Rogers up strongly on Ewing. Look at that. I mean, that's just not. Uh, if you're a gamer, hey, wait, wait, what happened? Yeah. Hey, you saw my finger the other day. Did I not broadcast? You kept playing. Yes, I kept playing. You kept broadcasting. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in, in the Raptor, but I did not know a Nike on. made cast. So <laughs> apparently they do. Yeah. Although if they do, I would figure you would know. Into the game, replacing number 31. Here we go. Is number 20. My partner is going to abandon me once again. Sean Resper to the bench and Patrick Ewing. This time, cans both of them. And ties the game at 29 apiece. And we see again McCarty on Christie. Stoudemire comes to the ball. Christie backs McCarty up, tries to lose him. Can shot clock. Now it's six. Carlos Rogers into the lane, throws it up. Camby goes up for the rebound, no good. Comes down to Walter McCarty. Marcus Camby almost got that rebound, John, and he really made a great effort, but nice little ball fade by Carlos Rogers to create a drive opportunity. Starks over Camby. 
Sometimes you do not want John Starks heating up. That's just the first bucket in the game for Starks, but when he gets going, he's a very streaky player. He's the kind of guy that can knock in five, six, seven jumpers on top of you in no time. And then lets you know about it as well. Oh, yeah. Look at the defense he's playing. John Starks is fighting over screens to keep Peter Davis from getting the basketball. Stoudemire dumps it to Camby. Buck Williams stuffed him from behind. Long pass for Starks. Did Hubert get a hand on that? No, but he forced John Starks to throw that ball up. Starks is looking for the man coming from behind. Never give up on the play. That's what Hubert Davis did. Charlie Ward picking up a foul. The Knicks have regained the lead at two. There again, the good effort by Hubert Davis changing the shot of John Starks. We'll get back to Skydo right after this. A champ without a hand. You wouldn't happen to have a Phillips head screwdriver, would you? A rookie without a clue. Whoa! And a woman without a bra. Get your hands off me! From the creators of Dumb and Dumber. Oh, I need you now more than ever I need you. Woody Harrelson, Randy Quaid, Vanessa Angel, and Big Bad Bill Murray. Ah! Kingpin. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. Somebody give you a schedule, eight months. I will tell you exactly where you're supposed to be for eight months. Our goal is to win a championship and also to perform on the peak level every night. It's challenging. You know, you love the game, you love the sport, and that's why we're here. Believing I could make a difference wasn't the problem. I just didn't know how. I knew I couldn't do everything, but I could do one thing at a time. And I realized I wasn't the only one out there. I've learned so much from so many different people. It's been great getting involved. Team up with your community. Catch Sportsline with Paul McGuire, Tuesdays at 6.30 on Empire Sports Network. The Raptors down two to the Knicks at Sky Dome and our AST computer court sense replay showing you how to offensive rebound. I mentioned this earlier. We're coming back to the hold it right there. You'll see right here, Popeye Jones started from out here, came underneath the basket, and is working his way back out, pushing Ewing, who's occupied with Cliff Rozier. It's the under and out technique of offensive rebounding. Popeye Jones has a lot of success with that, as do many great offensive rebounders in the game, like Dennis Rodman, Charles Oakley. Take your man underneath the basket, or everybody forgets about you there because they start watching the ball. He goes underneath, but never takes his eye off the basketball. Stoudemire to Christie, he launches a three-pointer off the mark. Damon chases it down and then collides with Allen Houston. And Damon hits the deck. He's got a smile on his face, so hopefully Damon Stoudemire is okay. Foul call to the Knicks, number 20, Allen Houston. His second foul in the game, team foul number five. Get another Get look spot. at Damon right there. and Oh, and I think the left hand of... Allen Houston, I believe that he's doing a Dennis Rodman impersonation against the... Did Dennis get thrown out for something like that not too long yes. ago? Uh, His against Joe Wolf. That wasn't an accident. And, uh, well, all I can say is we all know how painful that can be. Well, the question is if David Stoudemire is going to make the next shot, John. John Saunders and Mickey Mouse here at court side is... Damon is... Okay, and knocks down the first free throw. David had 17 assists and 7 rebounds against the Celtics. Starks pushing it up the floor. Houston into McCarty. Buck Williams. Patrick Ewing, and he gets it off. That Buck Williams got away with a walk, John, when he caught that basketball, shuffled his feet a little bit, but Pat Ewing again going with that jump look, which he is just so effective at using. And that is a great move. I don't care if you're a big center like Pat Ewing or a guard getting into the middle. Jump look is a quick 
shot getting up and over the defense. See, Marcus Camby not able to get that perimeter jumper to drop. Cardi with the fly, short, Camby with the rebound. Two teams that work extremely hard out here tonight. It looks, like, it looks like there's 20 players on the floor instead of 10. It really does because they're all active and really trying to get one, get open, and two, deny everything with their rotations defensively if you're New York. Friday will be men's night at Skydome when Holt Renfro and Calvin Klein will be distributing zipper poles and samples of CKB. That's this Friday at 7 at San Antonio's here. So no women allowed whatsoever to stay on Holt Renfrew and Calvin right. Klein. Apparently not. Uh, a strange sort of offer. Ewing now. Five for the shot clock. Ewing tries to take Carlos Rogers up. That's no good. Camby had it. Ball to McCarty. But to foul, he's yelling, all ball, all ball. As always, <laughs> but Marcus can be doing this a great job of getting position. John, I got a question for you. If Friday night is men's night, mm -hmm. is there going to be a women's night? Situation for well, I would only stand to reason in this day of political correctness that the line, if there is in fact a men's Marcus night, Camby, that there must be a women's night. For two. Gotcha. Well, from McCarty chasing in for a rebound that wouldn't have mattered. Marcus. Two up there. Dick Pavetta giving Doug Christie a little bit of time to tie his shoelace. Is that one of the tricks that you try to use when you untie your shoelace? To get a breather? John, one thing I learned at a. Uh oh, that's trouble for the Knicks. Oh, Walter McCarty with a terrific effort. Broke the sign. See, Daniel Steinemeyer was like, you ready to race? You ready? Ready? Let's go. And then he stopped right there. And McCarty kept going. The sign is in two pieces now, by the way. <laughs> so that's an effort. You go flying in there and snap the thing in two. Christie. trying to stay with him. Christie tried to force the pass in, or McCarty looks like he got a hand on the ball and stepped in to help out. McCarty, they leave him open, but he doesn't take the shot. Ewing back to him. Good defense underneath, and McCarty can't get it off, and it's Raptors basketball. Well, he got the ball too far under the basket, John, so not only did he have to worry about the defender, Walt Williams getting a piece of it, but he had to get it by the bottom of the backboard, and so many times that'll change your shot, and you won't be able to get it up. Raptors down by one. Chance to regain the lead. Doug Christie with a handle. Camby comes over to set the screen and rolls off of it. Carlos Rogers alone underneath. And McCarty comes late. That's the foul. Carlos Rogers mad at himself right now. He jumped backward on that play. All he had to do is get down a little bit lower, get set. Carlos Rogers. A good look right here by Camby. See, Marcus gives it to Rogers, and Rogers just jumps backwards. Get down when you when you get that fake, when you fake the defender, if you get down in your stance, bend your knees, on, then when the defender reacts, you're ready to explode to the basket and you can Number take three, it all home. Starks, we enter the game. Starks comes Walter in for McCarty. Walter McCarty, who gave him a good effort. That's what coaches like Van Gundy are looking for. When you get in the game, you have to put in that effort every time. And a nice play there, Charlie Ward. Heads up play, knocking it off. Walt Williams. And they had a little dispute between the officials as to which way that was going to go, and finally confirmed it is Nick's basketball. Well, Walt Williams was saying Charlie Ward was out of bounds when he threw it off of him. But no dice. Officials going with blue. Ward comes back to the ball and quickly needs a double. That's a travel right sure there. sure is. Traveling. Charlie Ward rolling out of the pocket. <laughs> Not allowed. But he crossed the line of scrimmage, John. <laughs> See right there, that right foot's his pivot foot, and he takes that extra step. 
to get away from the defense. Did you have a chance much to watch Charlie Ward play football? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love the way he played. He, he was terrific. Raptors doing a nice job keeping the turnovers down. But Charlie Ward was a lot of fun to watch on the Florida State National Championship. Well, Williams in with the catch and a trip to the line. Excellent job by Walton getting inside. He's been quiet in the game. That's his first bucket of the game. Only taking four shots, but right again, taking advantage of Allen Houston, making Houston work. Anybody that's covering him immediately looks to get down to the post and force him to defend. Well, the Knicks have called a timeout before Walt Williams goes to the line. The Raptors lead it by one. I launched the gas. I'm off from Alcatraz. Out. Ready or not. Welcome to the rock. I love pressure. It's time. Fire. To rock. Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, Ed Harris. The Rock. Claim this month a direct ticket only on direct TV. Fan Forum, Mondays live at 5.30 on Empire Sports Network. Here at Skydome tonight, St. Martin Senior School, they produced a banner highlighting positive initiatives. And they won tickets to a Raptors game through Sprite's Jammin' with the Raptors contest. So congratulations to St. Martin Senior School. Raptors get the two-point lead after Walt completes the three-point play. New York does a great job with that press, John, and keeping somebody back as a release man and then getting the ball to the middle. But it's very important against pressure to keep somebody behind the basketball. Oh, no! Oh, my goodness! Incredible pass and catch. Christy to Candy. Well, that was beautiful. Yeah, Marcus gets up so high, John, you think he's going to hit his head on the rim every time he goes up for an alley-oop. Foul on Walt Williams. Check this pass out. Doug Christie coming down, and Marcus Camby runs the court so well. Catches it with his back to the bucket and has to turn to get it in. That's incredible athleticism right there. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything from Marcus in the first half. John Wallace now trying to get the Knicks a little closer. The Raptors four-point lead. And knocks the second of the two through. Three points in the game now for Wallace. Christie to Stoudemire. Walt Williams to the baseline. DeMarcus Camby high, up and in. Had to send that one skyward to get it over the outstretched hands. Impressive shot by Camby. He had no time to bring that ball down. Had to keep it up high and then get it up and over Pat Ewan. Had to give him a catch and the emphatic slam. That's the difference between the old boys and the young boys, John. Marcus Camby catches it, spins in the air and throws it. Pat Ewing gets it, comes down and says, oh, I can't do this acrobatic stuff, but I'm going to send it home. 13 points now for Ewing. Walt 
Williams. Trying to lose John Wallace, almost lost the ball. In, reverses it, doesn't go for the Wizard. Darrell Walker saying that's an offensive goaltending. Patrick Ewing took that ball right off. It looked like it may have come down and hit the rim again. Two minutes, less than two minutes but he pulled it off. Half. Starks, with Carlos Rogers in front of him. Prestige Stoudemire spins out of trouble. I'll tell you, John, that was a great catch. Not to turn that ball over. Walt Williams, no good. Candy after the rebound, saves it to Stoudemire. What an effort by Candy. Walt Williams open for three. Walt is struggling with the jumper now. Candy again gets the ball and forces Stark to foul him. Uh, John is doing a tremendous job. They're rebounding, they're going after the basketball. And that's what it takes when you're playing against the New York Knicks. Check out this effort by Marcus Camby. That's just great hustle, using his long arms, and one, not to foul, and then to keep the ball alive. And then Carlos Rogers with a heads-up play right here, just staying, I should say Marcus Camby, staying with the ball. You know, John, that's one thing, you know, in light of the comments that Damon Stoudemire made about the team defining themselves. One thing that teams come in and play Toronto know they're going to get a tough game. They know they're going to get a team that's going to play hard. But Damon Stoudemire, I think it's more of a statement on how they, what they expect of themselves. They already have respect around the league in terms of the way they play. Nice job there, Wallace trailing. They have the respect of the league, but Toronto expects so much more of themselves, and Damon Stoudemire expects so much more, but that's not good enough. Stoudemire tried to force it into Carlos Rogers, and then Marcus Camby knocks down Charlie Ward. Now, I know you're a huge music fan, and, and you, the CDs you got this, this thing? This Fast Breaks, it's called, the CDs. So slamming music of the Toronto, slamming music? Now, can I, can I, can I say something? Yeah, can I take the yeah, go ahead. headsets off and just plug it into this? You could sing. Uh, all right, you know, they, they occasionally write things for us to say, and Catch the groove with the smoking remix of <laughs> Sly and the Family Stone classic hit. I want to take you higher, featuring Carlos Rogers. Oh wait, maybe Carlos Rogers singing in here? I believe so. Did Leanna Ward write that? Well, you know what? She does use terms like smoking all the time. And she's always talking in that hip language, you know. Leanna Ward, our crack production crew. Oh, I'm gonna have to talk to her about that one though. Smoke it, smoke it, smoke it. I feel like I'm Jim Carrey. Down of iron. To Popeye Jones. Got it off the glass. Look at Carlos up. Nice job, Damon Stoudemire, Popeye Jones. New York's number 33, Patrick Ewing, picks up his second personal foul. Damon Stoudemire working off the screen from Walt Williams, turning that corner and doing a great job of getting in and finding Popeye. And Popeye doing the right thing, getting to the other side of the rim to avoid Patrick Ewing on the strong side. And if you're trying to avoid Patrick Ewing, you're probably doing the right thing. <laughs> This has been a terrific first half. We're under a minute to go, just under a minute. As Popeye makes it a three-point lead for the Raptors. This is against the New York Knicks team that's playing very good basketball right now. They're 10 games ahead of where they were last year at the same point. They only had 34 wins last year at this game. Wallace puts the shot up no good. Oakley and Ewing after the rebound, but it's Walt Williams that comes out of there. And now Damon Stoudemire just pulls up, lunges at three-pointer, and rattles it down. John, he came down, and he knew exactly what he was going to do. He looked over at Doug Christie and just said, this one's going up. 12 points now for Damon Stoudemire, 25 seconds to go. 12 points, a very efficient shooting, too, John. Ewing just loses Carlos. Patrick with 15 in the game. So the Raptors have the shot clock turned off. Under 10 seconds to go. Stoudemire. Walt Williams launches another three. Off the mark. Stoudemire gets the rebound to Popeye Jones. Carlos Rogers does not get the shot off. Walt Williams struggling in the first half. One for eight. But a terrific effort as Darrell Walker goes deep into his bench and builds a four-point halftime lead.
on the field and in life. Welcome to the NBA League Pass Halftime Show, your place for all the NBA scores and highlights. We begin our show with highlights from Tuesday night. Ronnie cycling the magic, looking to avenge Sunday's home loss to Gary Payton and the Sonics. Early on, Penny Hardaway getting the step. The short jumper in the lane won't fall, but Cycli there with the putback. He had 12 in the first half. The Sonics hitting the offensive glass as well. Payton missing the runner, but Larry Stewart right there for the rebound and the putback. Stewart with nine in the first quarter. Late in the first, the Sonics on the run. Payton to Terry Cummings for the reverse. Magic down five after one. Second quarter, Hersey Hawkins comes alive. The three from up top, the Sonics up by 10. Gerald Wilkins answers with three of his own. He had 18 on the night. And then it's Hawkins again from downtown. He nailed four on the night. The Sonics up seven at the break. Second half, Ronnie Cycli, a force down low, beating three Sonics on his way to the hoop. He finished with 18 points and eight boards. Then after going 0 for 6 in the first half, it's Hardaway getting the bucket. And the foul, he had 12 points in the third, including a lucky three. Penny Hardaway banks it in for three. He'll take him any way he can get. Yeah, he will. Magic within one, then Dennis Scott capping off Orlando's 21-4 run with a long three. Magic by nine after three. In the fourth, Peyton tries to bring the Sonics back. The driving layup counts. And the foul, Peyton the team high 23. But Brian Shaw finds the second half sensation. Penny Hardaway, the short hook. And Richie Adubato, now seven and one as Magic head coach. They win it 101-89, despite 23 from Gary Payton. Penny Hardaway with 26, as he and the Magic pass a big test. But well, this is huge because uh, we went to Indiana during that streak and won at Indiana and then now here. And we're 2-0 on the road with Coach Adubato right now. And uh, I think we needed to get away from home, you know, to really find ourselves, to really get back out there. And uh, right now, this is a great win for us. In a statistical oddity, Hardaway and his counterpart Gary Payton both went over from the field in the first half and together totaled one point. In the second half, the two scorched the Nets for a combined 48 points. Pat Riley's Heat 24 and 7 on the road. Doug Collins Pistons 25 and 5 at home. Something's got to give. Both teams flexing their muscles early. Off the pick and roll, Theo Ratliff over Isaac Austin. But moments later, Austin gets his revenge on the fast break, trailing the play, goes in uncontested. Austin with 14 in Alonzo Mourning's absence. End of the first quarter, Lindsey Hunter. Spotting up and playing, beat the clock. Lindsey fires, that's why he didn't. He buries the two. Like he knew it was going down before he let it fly. Pistons down by two after one. Second quarter, Grant Hill putting the moves on Vashawn Leonard. Off the glass, Hill finished with 16 points, nine assists. The Heat defense too much for Sean Leonard, causing the turnover, and Tim Hardaway rewards him. The wide open three, the Heat led by three and never looked back. They go on a 14-6 run, another three, this time Keith Askins beating the buzzer. Pat Riley's squad up by four at the break. Third quarter, belong to Leonard, the Detroit native hit three three-pointers in the period, extending the lead to nine. On the other end, though, Leonard burned on D. Aaron McKee, the pull-up, trying to keep Detroit close, but the Heat answer with a look inside to Austin. Then the Pistons try their hand at the three. Joe Dumars. Got it! But Tim Hardaway, unstoppable. Draining three of his 28 points, he also dished out a season-high 16 assists and the Heat go on to the victory in Detroit, 108-99. Despite the loss, the Pistons have been hot. Earlier this week, Detroit's Doug Collins was named NBA Coach of the Month for February. Collins led his Pistons to a 10-3 record and a franchise best fourth straight month of 10 or more wins. Jeff Van Gundy's Knicks hosting the Milwaukee Bucks and the Bucks getting off to the quick start offensively. Ben Baker losing Charles Oakley for two of his game high 25. He also had 15 rebounds. The Knicks wake up a 14-0 run. Scott Brooks caps it with a three-pointer. Brooks tied his season high with seven. Then John Starks finding Allen Houston back door for the alley-oop. Houston finished with 16 points on six of 10 shooting. The Knicks up by six at the break and it was anything but love for the Bucks as the Knicks continue to impress in the third quarter. And 
Now Buck Williams has Starks racing down and hit it. Knicks opened up a 14-point lead, the biggest of the game. Then with Ewing headed to the locker room with a bruised knee, the Bucks look to capitalize. Ray Allen, the floater for two of his 17. And then the big dog, Glenn Robinson, hitting from downtown for three of his 19. The Bucks go on a 15-0 run in Ewing's absence. But Ewing says enough of this. Returning to the bench late in the fourth, inspiring teammate Larry Johnson. A couple of fakes. And finally hitting the turnaround on the baseline. Johnson finished with 17 on the night, leading the Knicks to a 93-86 victory. They've won 22 of the last 23 at Madison Square Garden. George McLeod still in the hearts of the Maverick fans, but not the new Mavericks. Sean Bradley altering the shot, leading to a fast break. Michael Finley gets it back on the wing and finishing with some force. On the other end, Nick Van Exel slicing and dicing and hanging for two the hard way. Van Exel finished with a career high 37. But Finley was flying for the Mavericks. Stail by Finley. Michael Finley off the drive. Oh, yeah. Mavs down by one of the half. Third quarter, Van Exel on fire, tying his own Laker record, eight three pointers in a game. But Finley answering again with a power jam. Finley with 23 points, shooting 50% from the field. And a big night for Bradley, breaking a club record. Six block shots in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, the Lakers go on an 8-0 run. Bradley's turnover leads to a big Eldon Campbell slam. Campbell finished with 22 points and 10 rebounds. And the Lakers down the Mavericks, 102-92. Bradley finished with a club record, 10 block shots. A pair of veterans joining the injury plagued Rockets. Sunnell, Threat, and Eddie Johnson suiting up against the Clippers, but the starters doing their job early. Akeem Olajo on the steal, ahead to Mario Eli for two of his 18. Bill Fitch concerned, but Derek Martin catches fire. Three of five from downtown. Martin finished with 23. Then the Rockets D forces another turnover. Olajo on up ahead, this time to three, who scores his first two points as a Rocket. But warning. There's an outlaw on the loose. Bajankowski, Mike on the move, the lob, the ball, slammed up. Clips up by four at the break. Second half, Olajuwon just toying with the Clippers. Nailing the jumper, 22 for Akeem. But L.A. in it down the stretch. Brent Barry, the no-look pass to Outlaw. The Clips gunning for eight straight at home. But Matt Bullard spoils the fun. Bullard for three more. Bingo! Matt Fuller to career high 24, and the Rockets snap an eight game road losing streak with a 113 109 victory. Olajuwon, his 14th career triple double. Remember, for more on the NBA League Pass, click on to NBA.com. Check out the entire League Pass schedule, nightly scores, stats, and news, and visit the NBA Theater. It's the online world of the NBA, only on NBA.com. Former Hawks coach Mike Fratello looking to lead his Cavs to win in Atlanta, but the Cavs finding it tough to generate offense with the Kemi Matumbo at the other end. But Tumbo rejecting Chris Mills and says, not in my house. Then with Matumbo out, Bobby Sora drives and dishes for Vitaly Potapenko. The Cavs up by five. First quarter winding down, Mookie Blaylock can't connect, but Christian Leitner grabs the rebound and sinks two of his 21 just before the buzzer. Second quarter, Tyrone Corbin knocking in three of his 21, but the rookie not intimidated by Matumbo. Potapenko, the pretty hook, two of his 13, Cavs down by one at the break. Second half, Mookie Blaylock, the fake, frees himself up for the three, and three of his 19 on the night. Trailing by six, the Cavs look to run. Sura got tired around Hill for the right-handed punch. Hill, a team high, 18 points, but the Hawks got him a tumble in the fourth. 10 of his 18 in the final period, and the Hawks shoot nearly 54% en route to a 93-88 victory. And the Hawks 25-3 and three at home. Anthony Mason showing his latest design. Vlade Divac showing some skills. The nice move around Greg Anderson, the spin and the bucket. Divac finished with 10 points and five boards. Vinny Del Negro keeping the Spurs in it early, driving scoop shot for two of his 17. But Mason providing the Hornets sting. 
Muggsy Pogues finds him for two of his 19 on the night. The Spurs respond, Vernon Maxwell to Avery Johnson. Maxwell a pair of assists and 14 points. Then Monty Williams going to work. Monty to the hole, right hand it goes for Monty Williams. The Spurs up by one, but it's Williams who makes the mistake, giving Glenn Rice a chance to fire from downtown. Rice a team high 24. And then the Hornets, like many teams this year, taking advantage of the Spurs down low. Matt Geiger jamming it home. And the Hornets win behind Anthony Mason's triple-double. 105-98, Mason 19 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists. And in case you missed it, the MVP of the 1997 NBA All-Star Game was named February's NBA Player of the Month. Glenn Rice averaged almost 29 points a game, leading the Hornets to a 10-3 record. P.J. Carlissimo's Blazers hosting the Nets at the Rose Palace, and it was all New Jersey through three quarters. Sam Cassell, 25 of the night, hitting five of 10 from downtown and chipping in with a little defense as well. The steal for Cassell, a three, got it! Sam Cassell, back-to-back drive vectors. Kerry Kittles also had the hot hand, hitting his first nine shots from the floor, but in the fourth, Kenny Anderson with the steal, running the floor and connecting on the layup and the foul, 11 of his 28 in the final quarter to go along with his 14 assists on the night. Then Stacy Ogman behind the back for Clifford Robinson, Blazers by three, and then it's Robinson again. This time from behind the arc, he finished with 28 as the Blazers down the nets, 123-118. A side note, both teams combined for 23 three-pointers. Mark Jackson and the Pacers looking for their fourth straight win, but the Celtics on the mark early. Rick Fox sly getting around Reggie Miller and over Rick Smiths. Larry Brown and the Pacers down by seven at the half, but in the second half, Miller sparking the Pacers, hitting for three of his 29 points in 43 minutes of action. On the other end, Todd Day with his own heroics. Todd Day now gets it up. Yes! So that's it! That's an X! <laughs> Celtics up by six after three in the fourth. The Pacers on a 10-1 run. Jackson spotting Dale Davis down low. Jackson a little giddy, but it turns to embarrassment. Rick Fox, some chicanery off Jackson's head, cutting the Pacer lead to two. Seconds later, now down by three. Eric Williams giving it one last shot. Way off the mark, and the Pacers hold on for a 98-95 victory. Indiana 4-2 since acquiring Mark Jackson. The Sixers and Bullets meeting in Philly in the home team, running early. Allen Ivers in the lead for Jerry Stackhouse, two of his game high, 25. Then Rod Strickland, first the penetration, finding Jawan Howard. Howard finishing with 22, and then the great give and go, Strickland to Weber. He connects on the layup and the foul. Weber had 14, Strickland 19 points and 10 assists. Late in the fourth, Calvert Chaney hitting for two of his season high 24. But on the other end, Derek Coleman brings the Sixers within one, draining the three from up top. But Philadelphia needs to foul, and off the inbounds, they fail to do so. The Bullets in the clear, they run out the clock and hold on to defeat the Sixers in Philadelphia, the final 107-106. Calvert Cheney leading the way with a season high 24. In other NBA news, Vancouver Sharif Abdurrahim was named the NBA Rookie of the Month of February. Abdurrahim averaged over eight boards a game and led all rookies in scoring with 24 and a half points a game. Tomorrow's schedule. A reminder, the entire league pass schedule as well as scores, highlights, and statistics from around the league can be found online on NBA.com. Thanks for watching the NBA League Pass Halftime Show. Enjoy your second half. A Raptor pin on. But, I mean, you went through the trouble to run up to the succession, or concession, whatever you want to say. And buy that for Dick Vivetta. Well, we'll have to get his attention here. I'm going to have to and ask Dick takes exactly what is the meaning of this. Uh, it seems like he's not very grateful for your effort. And, and really, you know, it hurts, John. It hurts. Dick, what? Dick, you took the pin off, Dick. He's got a call from the league office. It's a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on, on my underwear where you can't see it.
<laughs> uh, he says he is, in fact, still wearing it. It's just concealed. Watch now. the pin, Dick. Watch the pin. <laughs> uh, Dick Bavetta, who makes it a happening every time he's officiating a basketball game. I mean, he's just, just part of the fun and part of the action. That's one of the things that makes the NBA so great. It's a very people-friendly sport. You can be almost involved in the game. You saw in the clip we showed before as Larry Johnson was going right in the face of his own fans as we take a look and see San Antonio will be here and we'll be here as well on City TV in the new VR on Friday at 7. But the players are very interactive, so are the officials, with the fans. Absolutely, John. Now, one thing we're going to have to look for here in the second half, Allen Houston had a pretty good first half at, you know, shooting the basketball, doing now. He doesn't, he struggles in the second half. He hasn't had as good a second half in the season as a lot of people expect him to. And again, part of that is the fact that John Starks really comes up big in the second half. So Toronto has to really make sure that they don't let Allen Houston catch fire. Well, we're underway. And Quickly, the shot clock goes down to eight. Walt well, Williams. Larry Johnson on him, tipped away. Only two on the shot clock. Walt gets it off and catches the back of the iron. Oakley to Allen Houston, who's in a battle. Fades back and knocks down the jumper. Nice job of clearing himself some room on that. He had a little step back right before he went up for the shot. Enough to clear himself from Doug Christie getting the shot off. Popeye Jones to Walt Williams. Popeye around Oakley. Oakley stays with him and commits the foul. Oakley really bailed out Popeye because he did not have a good shot he going up. But he did the right thing with the clock ticking down. Take that ball to the basket, see if you can't get a foul. And right there, you can see Oakley just swiping at it and catching him on the arm. Popeye Jones, along with Walt Williams, struggled in the first half 0 for 3. You don't see that too often. Popeye usually shoots a very good percentage. Popeye didn't play a lot in the first half, and he only played 17 minutes the entire game against Boston on Monday night, Monday afternoon, actually. Well, with a lot of different bodies Toronto has now, different situations, different matchups. Darrell Walker's going to play with his team and see who can do what when. Remember, we keep talking about the fact that this is still a training camp for Toronto. They're building and they're finding who can do what, who's going to be around in the future. And Darrell Walker does a lot of experimenting with different lineups to see who exactly is best in what situation. Good hustle by Walt Williams to get in and break that up. Loses it as he tried to get it to Ogier. Houston to Oakley, and Oakley lays it in. There's an excellent pass by Houston. Good job by Oakley running the court. Now the Raptors have to make sure you turn the ball over. you got to get back quickly. This New York Knicks team is not an explosive team. They do not want to get in an up and down fast paced game. So Toronto has to make sure they use their athleticism to get better. Christie just knocks it in over top of Houston. He didn't come out and guard him. But Christie's been making Allen Houston work every single time at the defensive end. He's got 14 in the game right now. Oh, Patrick Ewing again emphatic with the slam around Rozier. Oh, he really does go up strong, John. He looks like he's going to rip the basket off every time he gets up. And Christie playing a two-man game. Again, Christie launches over Houston and again knocks it in. And right off after the jump shot, Darrell Walker telling everybody to get up and pressure. But there will be a foul. Foul caught on Toronto's number 42, Walt Williams. Walt Williams picking up the call. Foul number one for the Raptors. Get a look at Doug Christie. It's just like Pat Ewing. A, a forceful play. You know what, Pat Ewing has this tough image on the court, John. Very physical player, doesn't smile a lot in the court. I'll tell you what, off the court, one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. Oh, without question. Charlie Ward glides in and creates a shot. Oh, Ewing is one of the likable guys around the NBA. 
And I was sure glad to find that out because when I went to camp with the Knicks after exchanging elbows for many years, the last guy I wanted to run into was Pat Ewing. And turned out to be one of the nicer players on the team and really made me feel welcome. Popeye Jones doesn't go down. Ewing gets the rebound. Moore pumps it into Larry Johnson. Shot's no good, but he's fouled. Toronto, Toronto not getting back right now. Walt Williams looks a little tired on the court. Darrell Walker going to make some changes. I would imagine that Walt may be the player that's going to come out of the game. Yeah, he's picked up his fourth foul early on here in the third quarter. But he looks tired, too. You see him, he's grabbing on his shorts. He's been not really running as he normally gets up and down the court. And when you're tired, that's when you end up picking up fouls because you start reaching and grabbing as opposed to playing with your feet. Whereas Marcus really had a solid first half with 14 points. Eight points coming. I should say eight opportunities at the free throw line. He had a lane violation. Larry Johnson only had three points in the first half. The average is almost 13. As I mentioned at the top of the show, in the last 11 games, shooting 58% from the field. It's not surprising that Johnson causes a few lane violations. He's got that little hitch at the top of his free throw. Yeah, you really got to keep an eye on him when exactly when he releases the basketball because of that hitch. Stoudemire around the ward and Houston to Rozier. Throws it up, and there was a lot of contact there. Rozier's wondering where the foul was. They're looking right back at the official with the contact. Even though there was contact, it was early as he was going up, and that's why there wasn't any call. Good hands by Canby to Skip Ewing. He gets it back. Still belongs to the Knicks. Watch yourself, Pop. Oakley open after the inbound pass. No good. Rebound comes right to Houston. Oh, that was a walk. Not called. Larry Johnson gets the stick back. See what happened there is Toronto got in trouble because a guard, Allen Houston, picked up the offensive rebound and all your big guys out of position. It's very important. Doug Christie stay in and make sure that he always puts the body on Houston, not allow any long rebounds to get by. Christie again, backing down Houston as he did in the first half. Well, fade away in Kansas. That's a very, very difficult shot right there. Doug seems to be a lot more comfortable when he goes the other way into his fadeaway. That one, you have to jump into it and just hop up over the defense. Generally, for a right-handed shooter, going to his right or to the right is a more difficult shot than actually turning left into it, which seems a lot more natural. Rozier stripping you and can't hang on to it. Well, you can see the energy that Cliff Rozier brings to the court. He plays hard out there. Play. Now, you see Pat Ewing's reaction. He didn't react too bad on that play right there, so he really didn't get fouled. Cliff Rozier got more ball than anything else. But Pat Ewing's saying, all right. Ewing and Daryl Walker now. now and it's a T on Ewing. He was talking to Carlos Rogers, John. Right on the sideline, and Daryl Walker did jump in on that, but Patrick Ewing really jawing at Carlos Rogers on the sideline. And he was giving it back to the bench. And Patrick gets hit with a technical. Mark Wonderlich, the official explaining it. You know, look, see, now Carlos Rogers must have said something. He's looking over at him right now. After he gets the basketball, watch what he does. Hits a shot, and then he's going to look right over at Carlos Rogers, just start going at him, jawing at him a little bit, playing a little chin music. Well, the sign was definitely given for the technical. Maybe it could have been a warning. Uh, and maybe then it became a warning after the tee because I tell you, one warning you might want to send out right now, John, when Carlos Rogers comes in the game, he might want to be a little careful of who he goes near, especially if he's got Ewing on the back of his shirt. 
Uh, and after you just called him one of the Get up, nicest mile off, the court. Uh, oh, off mm -hmm. the court. Not somebody you would want to mess with on the court. And I'll tell you what, because when we used to do the battles back in the old days of college, you know, there weren't a lot of nice words spoken. There were a lot of, lot of ball. We talk a lot about family and sort of things, but uh, not in a nice way. Especially and, uh, mothers. Yeah, yeah, you know, moms and, you know, all kinds of things like that. And so when I did encounter Patrick with the Knicks, I was a little concerned that maybe he remembered some of our previous conversations. But, again, he let it all go because he leaves it on the court. As a matter of fact, it's one of the things he talked about which really impressed me. He goes, weren't those great battles, intense, hard, competitive, and that's the way he plays every time he's still staring down Carlos Rogers. And looks back again. We've got a battle here at Skydome. For official caps, sweats, tees, and anything else you want to lay your claws on, come to Sears, home of the Raptors next. Sears, a proud sponsor of tonight's game. Myrtle Beach Golf and Lodging, the largest wholesaler of golf packages along the Grand Strand. Select from a variety of the finest accommodations and tee it up at over 85 championship courses. Famous designs such as Tidewater or the Scottish Lynx of the Legends. We can even fly you here. Include car rental at unbelievable wholesale prices. Myrtle Beach Golf and Lodging. Nobody offers better quality or prices. Call 1-800-554-4546. Ask about our buy one, get one free offer. Phew, that foot odor. I can't take it anymore. But can anything stop it? This will. Odor Eater's insoles. Now its powerful charcoal formula contains genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda. Look, foot odor is caused by sweaty acid. And now Odor Eater's actually neutralizes that odor-causing acid. Finally, no more foot odor. And I thought it was hopeless. Only Odor Eater's insoles stop foot odor with genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda. Santangelo has been creating hair designs and servicing men and women's hair for the last 30 years. Santangelo will make that dream turn real. For hair loss, Santangelo offers two procedures, gradual integration and micro-incision crafting. With Santangelo, you'll get the look you're after. Hi, I'm Ralph Santangelo. From hair designs to hair additions, surgical and non-surgical, you'll love our look on you. Just call or stop in for a free consultation. Santangelo, for that look you love. Toronto holding on to a three-point lead. Our AST computer court sets replay show you Doug Christie operating in the post. Now watch this right now. As he gets it right here, hold it right there. Take a look what he does. He takes his left foot, jams in, and then he'll step back and jump in the air and create room for himself. Even with Pat Ewing and Allen Houston right there, that ability to put that foot, jam the defender, and step back and still maintain the body control and square the shoulders really sums it off with Doug Christie's ability to score in the post. Tremendous job by the big guard and maybe the most improved player in the NBA this season. Now Christie with 19 points, including eight during the third quarter. Ewing makes one of two and gets it back to a two-point game. By Jones, Cliff Rozier drives on the smaller Houston. Ewing has on Christie, very active. Canby has it now with the shot clock down to six. Canby leans in. That's no good. Hit by Popeye Jones twice. But Popeye Jones anticipated where that ball was going to go, and he was right there. And again, keep it alive. Even if you're knocking it to yourself, keep that ball alive and stay active. Charlie Ward loses the handle. Oakley to Allen Houston. Free throw line jumper, and he gets it. Very quick release. Once Allen Houston gets up there, that ball is gone. By Jones. Again, they get it to Christie. Over Houston again. Ewing with the rebound. That's a tough shot right there, John, because nobody at all had position for the rebound. Illegal defense called against the Raptors. Illegal defense called against the Toronto Raptors. That's their first. Get another look at the Popeye Jones with the offensive rebound right here. Watch the quickness how he gets up right here. Popeye Jones comes in, taps it, and right again, he's up there again. It's not how high you jump. It's how quick you can get up a second and third time. And Popeye Jones is tremendous at that. 
the quick jumping, the ability to just get back up there, bounce two, three times, and stay out in the on the basketball. A couple of rebounds and a couple of points on the same trip. That's the old Moses Malone technique. All the guys on the bench just shake their head and go, God, this guy just went out, got three rebounds and a bucket on one play. Ward, but Canby got the big hands up in the way. Face. Double team now. Oakley into Ewing. He can't get it as a couple of hands swatted at the orange. Oh, that was a very hard pass, John. Oakley just rifled it into Pat Ewing. He was coming up to meet it. It was a very hard pass to catch. Stoudemire comes up just when he needed most. Knocks it at three. He now at 16. At 16, but shooting four of six. Oh, Andy. And look at Carlos Rogers in the Raptors bench so quickly. Marcus Camby is thinking he's got all ball right now. You gotta love this. The big fella going up and Marcus saying, uh-uh. No, no, no. We're a sky over right now, Patrick. And I remember you knocked me on my tail when he played at Madison Square Garden. Now check out Carlos Rogers. I mean, they immediately got off the bench. When Camby went for the block, yeah, this could get interesting down in the next few minutes because clearly the Raptors are trying to get inside the head of that man, Patrick Ewing. The only problem with that, John, Patrick Ewing has been around an awful long time. It's hard to get inside the head of a guy with a lot of experience, but he does not make good on the free throw. And now Carlos Rogers walks past his flexion, getting ready to check into the game. Foul against Charlie Ward. Don't forget the Raptors Foundation's second no, annual no, wrap up charity dinner on it's Saturday, second, March 22nd at the Convention three. Center. The gala evening will be a celebration of his sophomore season and will be attended by the entire team and coaching staff. Tickets are available. Call 416 216 1952. That is something not to miss. A lot of fun. A lot of help for the Raptors. Charitable Foundation. Risky again. Stoudemire lines over Charlie Ward. Goes right to pop by Jones, who had to reverse, didn't get it. He rushed it, John. He had a lot more time than I think he realized. But Stark's turning the ball over. Wound up trying to carry the ball. <laughs> the Raptors suits down there as Bob Zeppelotto and John Long look like they didn't want to release the ball after it ended up in their lap. Hey, they got the lead. Hang on to it. Raptors by five. Four plus to go here in the third quarter. Stoudemire running off Tex, trying to get open. Spins on Ward. Five on the shot clock. Caught by Jones, lets it go. No good. Rozier up for the rebound, nearly had it. But it will belong to the Knicks. Brennan Malone, former coach of the Toronto Raptors. Very detailed. Coach, in terms of studying the plays, the opponent's plays, understands as well as anybody in this league in terms of what it takes to prepare for a basketball game. Oakley collides with Rozier. A lot of contact on the floor, John. You can hear some of the fans getting into the game now saying, leave Larry Johnson open. Number 34, Charles Oakley in the line. One plus for two. Oakley at the line, trying to cut into a five-point Raptors lead. Does just that. And Charles Oakley, as you mentioned, is, you look at what he can do and you think, not the most talented guy out there, but he is so hard-working and averaging close to a double-double. He really is. He gives you that effort every single time on the court on the rebounds. And again, maybe the best weak side defensive player for the New York Knicks. He really understands health defense. He's always looking to take up space, move over, help out his teammates, and a very physical presence on the court at all times. Stoudemire to pop by Jones. 
Carlos. Larry Johnson right on him. Low suck. Won't stay. Rozier with the rebound. Gets it back on the glass. And it's good. Not only did he fly in there and get that rebound, but he turned and went up quickly before the defense could react. Ewing and Rozier is forced to foul. Patrick Ewing has that look on his face like, you guys are here for one reason, and one reason only, that's to ruin my night. <laughs> a tough day at the office for Patrick Ewing. The Raptors lead by five. The route. Introducing the 1997 Miller Lite stock car. Sure beats other sedans. The new Miller Lite Indy car. No radio, no heat, but hey, look at that handling. And if it's acceleration you're after, take a look at the Miller Lite Top Fuel Dragster. It leaves everything else at the light. Every Miller Lite car comes with our 16-second roadside assistance plan. We say shoot, shop, and compare. I hope they burn in hell! A time to kill is an emotional firestorm. You ever seen a man executed? Sandra Bullock. You watch him die, you watch him beg. Samuel L. Jackson. You got it, darling. What would you do? Matthew McConaughey. We have a duty to seek the truth with their hearts. Kevin Spacey. He's taking justice out of your hands. Oscar-worthy performances. One of the very best movies of 1996. A Time to Kill. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. This isn't my chair, it's your chair. Those are your kids, those are your frequent flyer statements. These are your people. Good morning, Mr. B. Good morning, Mr. B. If you sit in this chair, you can find out anything. This year's sales meet marketing budget. Margins on laughing tubing budget. You're not in this chair. You're on a plane, and your people are all over the world. So how do you let everybody know what's going on right now, at this very second? Hey! Four, six. Ask him. Welcome back to Skydome. Right now I'm courtside with Luke Otzit Jr. I understand that you have Lakers tickets, but tonight are you a Raptors fan? Yeah, well, I'm, 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 Zeke is a good buddy, you know. Zeke and uh, and Magic and and, you know, my, and that man over there that does the, the broadcasting for the Knicks. I played with Clyde. And I got drafted, I guess, to the Knicks at 60, but I was already a professional actor. I wasn't hungry enough. <laughs> got any advice for our team tonight? Huh? Got any advice for our team tonight? They're doing, keep up doing what they're doing. Get a, some some better uh, high percentage shots closer to the basket. Uh, they need more close to the basket stuff. Forget about Pat Ewing. He'll foul out if they go to him. All right. And they're the team of the future. All right. Enjoy your time in Toronto. Okay. Let's get back to courtside with John and Leo. And thanks a lot, Lauren. There's the man that Luke Gossett referred to, Clyde Walt Frazier. The nickname, of course, because of the outrageous way he used to like to dress, but now he's gone with the country club look. That's right, a little more toned down. He used to have the, although he still had the fur walking yeah, in today. Sure. But uh, Clyde, one of the coolest customers in the NBA, and one of the greatest to ever play as well. We've got a great one here with under three minutes left. Popeye Jones lets it fire again. He just does not have the range tonight. One for nine in the game for Popeye Jones, and you rarely see, and I mean rarely see Popeye Jones have a shooting performance like that. Well, think about this. He and Walt Williams now combined two for 18 from the field. And the Raptors still have a three-point lead. Sharon Wright now guarding Ewing. A little bump before the shot. Now's your chance to win with our blockbuster Raptorama contest. Call now. Residents in Ontario only, and be caller number 33 to win. 1-800-547-5099 or 416-870-1026 for your chance to win on Blockbusters for after Ewing just 6 of 11 from the free throw line. He already has 11 rebounds and 22 points though. Normally shoots right around 75% from the free throw line. Raptors looking to pull off their first ever victory against the New York Knicks. They did win one exhibition game this year in Ottawa. The first exhibition game of the preseason. David Stoudemire so quick off that dribble. Stopping on a dime and just hitting up. 
18 now for Damon. Ewing will go to the line. I mentioned the 23 points now for Patrick Ewing. And he only needed seven to reach 21,000, so he's over that. 19th all-time scoring leader. He's just had uh, just an absolutely tremendous career. And this season, John, I mentioned he should be slowing down, but look at his numbers. Eight games and 30 or more points, 33 double doubles in points and rebounds. And, and you can see the career statistics. So he's just uh, getting better as he gets older. Like I've always said about you, John, just getting better. I appreciate that. Of course, you're a lot older <laughs> than somebody I am. Double team now out on Stoudemire. Caught by Jones, finds Damon again. Stark staying with Stoudemire. Shot clock is at five. Christie lets launch a long three-pointer in Kansas. Christie! Three! Christie really feeling it. Christie with 22 points. Oh, Oakley just muscles his way in to get it. See the Raptors numbers on three pointers, John. Seven of 14. There's the Knicks only one of five. Sharon Wright now working on Ewing. Ewing a couple of bumps. Sharon Wright won't go. Wallace clears the glass. And Carlos Rogers faded back on that. He should have went in there and tried to jockey for position. He had a lot of time to see that Sharon Wright was setting up for a post move. Something off the ball. Looks like Popeye Jones going to get called for the foul. Number 54, Popeye Jones. Buck Williams comes second back into the game. I mentioned Ewing with the 21,000 points in Buck Williams. He needs seven coming into this game to pass Tiny Archibald in 52nd place all time. And right now, he has three points, so. Well, I remember playing against Buck Williams. Now I'm really going to feel Buck old, Williams John. Back in 1981, number 42, in the Carrier Buck Classic Williams back in Syracuse, he came in with the University of Maryland. Remember Albert King? Oh, yeah. And Buck Williams, Bernard King's brother, Albert King, and uh, they had one heck of a team. And I tell you what, you could see right then and there, Buck Williams was just a powerful, powerful power forward that just moved bodies and had the quick ability to get up in the air, up and over people. Days of Lefty Giselle in Maryland. That's right. One point came. Raptors have 12 to shoot, and there's 22 seconds now left. Stoudemire drives on Stark, spins him one way, then the other. Walt Williams down the lane. Tough shot, fading left. Never got any of the iron, and that's a shot clock violation. Walt ended up in the front row. So you can see Daryl Walker does not really like that shot opportunity right there. Walt Williams really struggling. You mentioned the numbers. Walt now one of ten from the field, and not really like again. He looks tired to me, Johnny. Just hasn't been in sync at all in this ball game. Well, Oliver Miller is missing this game with a upper respiratory problem. And Charlie Ward, we have usually when one player on the team gets it, it finds its way around the rest of the players. And perhaps Walt is getting ready to come down with the flu. Is that your professional opinion, no. Dr. Saunders? <laughs> just trying to help out here. Carlos Rogers up to nine. Allen Houston, Christie with a pass, trying to get it off. But getting up, Dick Pavetta waved it off. One official counted it. Now let's Ladies get the final verdict. It is good. Raptors. That was close. Dick Pavetta looked like he wanted to wave it off. And everyone appealing. We'll sort things out when we come back. San Pangelo has been creating hair designs. I didn't grow up in this neighborhood. I'm from a small town in North Carolina. 
but some things here are just like home. Sure, every community has problems, but when everyone works together, it doesn't matter where you're from. So team up with your community, even if you are the new guy in town. Special message. Say no to smoking. Say no to alcohol. Say no to red meat. Say no to rock music. Say no. Your rules are really beginning to annoy me. It takes more than big guns to save the world. It takes the bad attitude. Nobody draws until this hits the ground. Kurt Russell. Escape from L.A. Draw. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. I think I had a shot for all occasions. I practiced hook shots, I practiced my finger roll, I practiced jump shots. You know, the finger roll took it over. That was just a great shot for me. Just roll it over their fingertips, you know, and they think they got it and it just roll over. Everybody can dunk, but everybody can't finger roll. Hey, basketball fans, now you can try NBA Inside Stuff magazine free. Get inside the locker room and the huddle. See the action up close. Call now and get all the exciting photos and behind-the-scenes stories that let you be an NBA insider. Call now to get your free trial issue. If you like it, you'll get five more issues. A whole year of NBA action for over 30% off the cover price. NBA Inside Stuff. Call now for your free trial. Welcome back to Sky Dome here on City TV and the new VR. John Saunders, and Leo Routens, Lori Belanger. The Raptors with a three point lead at the beginning of the fourth quarter, still not shooting it very well at all. Though. No, and the Knicks percentage creeping back up again, but Toronto doing a good job from three free throws, a little bit better, more accuracy. Rebounds, New York getting the edge. They did not have the edge before. Toronto was doing a good job. And turnovers, Toronto forcing. 15 turnovers, staying ahead of the Knicks in that department. Stark pushed it up against Sean Rasper. Stark, nice shot by Sean Stark. Nice Rather screen. Sean Stark. And nice screen by Buck Williams to free up Starks. John Stark's doing a real good job of rubbing Sean Rasper off on the screen and then squaring up, taking that shot quickly. Well, Williams comes up firing and knocks it in. Now, if he can get hot, this could be very interesting for the Raptors. That's the first shot he took, John White felt, felt that he really was into the shot with his legs and everything else. That's the best looking shot he's taken this whole evening. Oakley with the miss, and then Walt Williams kept it alive. Walt loses the handle. Ten on the clock. Walt Williams drives the lane. But they're going to call it a charge. Wow, did he take it strong. I wonder why they don't count the basket, John. He released that basketball. Get a look right here. You see him going up. The ball's out of his hands right now. And then there's the contact. So take the two off the board. As Starks goes back to work. Starks barking out some sort of set. Well, you got Larry Johnson posted up against Sean Resper, but immediately Candy comes out to help out. But uh oh. Get that ball out to John Starks in the perimeter, and he nails it and ties the game at 75 apiece. Starks has seven points in the game right now. Walt Williams around Oakley. Carlos Rogers pushes it up. Won't go. Buck Williams comes up with a loose ball. Ball out of bounds, but it still belongs to the Knicks and Jeff Van Gundy. 
Here's your hustle stats, and boy, that doesn't surprise me that they're dead even because, as we mentioned before, times it seems like there's 20 players out there that are working so hard. Well, it's really what has been a well played game in terms of both teams working hard defensively and really challenging each other. I'll tell you what, that's a very tough shot by Larry Johnson trying to get it up and over the defense. But loves that fadeaway in the middle. Knicks now have their first lead. It's 554 in the second quarter at 33 31. Christie drives in. The foul is before the shot. New York's number 20. Now, we Houston haven't really seen Doug get back into that post there to try to operate for quite a while now. Had a real good first half. 11 points in the first half, primarily taking advantage of whatever guards were playing them in the post. Right now, you see John Starks, how he's working, really fighting Doug Christie. Look how far out he had to get the ball. And now Dick Mavetta telling John Starks, don't even say a word now. I caught you, and you're getting a little bit too physical on this play. Watch Starks doing everything he can right now. He put the forearm right in his chest of Doug Christie to take his space away and not allow him to turn. And Bavetta was right on the play. That was one of those cases where the whistle could have blown a couple of seconds earlier on, than that. On. Yeah, there's a lot of contact when come on, Starks would not allow him to get the position. And that's why Doug Christie ended up so far away from the bucket. Timeout, Toronto. Carlos Rogers having trouble with the entry pass, and so he calls for a 20-second timeout, 9.29 to go. But John, one of the things you always do get with John Starks is that defensive effort. As I mentioned, that's one of the reasons a lot of times Allen Houston doesn't get the games now. I want to show one play that we kind of picked up from Allen Houston early. Now watch this. Watch Allen Houston with the basket. Uh, Doug, Doug, David Stoudemire has the basketball. And see the screen's coming. Hold it right there. What? Look at his eyes. He's looking. He sees the screen coming, and then he's going to jump over that screen to stay ahead of David Stoudemire, anticipating the screen. That's great defense right there. Very, very important for John Starks. Any player. When you, when you see that screen coming, don't wait to get hit. Don't feel that contact. Anticipate the screen. Jump over that screen the way he did on that play. That's one of the reasons he's such a good defender. He's always aggressively anticipating what might happen out there. Sean Rasper just catches it, turns, and fires, and cans it. And who did he beat? John Stark. Now, John, I just hyped you up and gave you all this pub about your defense, and you just got nailed with a jump shot. Although, I got to give John some credit there. His teammates didn't help out. He, had to, he got caught in the screen. Stark lets fly with a three off the mark. And that's out of bounds to the Raptors. Buck Williams has been in the league now for 16 years, and he's still diving into the front row. I'll tell you what, he looks as good physically as the day he stepped into the league. Buck really takes care of himself. And one very strong player. Oh, Christie got Are you up. Kidding me? He hung there and waited for the defense to fly by. Allen Houston yeah. glides in. A foul, and he can count it. That's a big bucket right there. Allen Houston taking advantage of a. Missed dunk by Doug Christie, but I'll tell you what, you have to love that effort. Doug Christie went right at the defense. Check out Buck Williams goes up, and Doug Christie held him off with his left hand. And Buck, Buck Williams is looking at Dick Rivetta saying, hey, that's a foul right there. But nice little hesitation move in the drive for Allen Houston. Double foul against Allen Houston and Doug Christie. And that is something that's been building since the beginning of this game. That was a Starks and Christie. Well, again, the Knicks are very conscious of Doug Christie's ability to, to dominate a game in the post. They're doing everything they can to push him out and get him out as far from the bucket as they can. It was Allen Houston. He now checks out of the game. Ward out on Dane Stoddard. Christie gets it now. Starks on Ward into the game. Spins on John Starks. And Starks commits the foul. Nice timing on the spin. Doug Christie dribbles into the contact, dribbles, and then as soon as there's a release right there, see, see, John Starks pushed up with his hip right into Doug Christie, and as soon as that hip came up, that's when Doug Christie felt the pressure and spun to the baseline. 
Walt Williams trying to set the screen for Stoudemire. Damon hits the deck and calls a timeout. Toronto. A little slippery spot on the floor, and the Raptors are down by two. This has been a great battle since the opening toss continues to be that way. Back here in a moment. Two escaped convicts. Sure, I did a run in the first place. When people start shooting at me, I run. Are about to form a partnership. We marry, baby. Based on close friends. These people are trying to kill you. Mutual acquaintances. My house. Go, 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 go. But I'm warning you, it's messy. And $25 million. I don't want that. Where the hell did you get a key from the cops? My ex-husband. He's a cop. Fled. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. Six and 13, row W. Join the game, sir. People come here, they're like guests in my home. I make sure they find the right seat, and I make sure they have a good time. I just love being here and the adrenaline, the hype, the excitement. That's what I love. I can't watch too much of the game because sometimes people try to sneak into the wrong seat, but they gotta go. You're out of here. I love basketball, so this is a perfect place to work. I have a great job. <laughs> a stretched out wire hanger. A spare tire. A milk crate with the bottom torn out. Growing up, it didn't matter what we played with, as long as we played. See the NBA's best every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday night on TNT and TBS. Don't miss a game. There's a look at the Raptors dance pack. Out here on the floor, doing their usual terrific job of entertaining the crowd during these timeouts. And right now, the crowd on the edge of their seats as the Raptors are involved in a terrific game. Here's a look at your Bell leaderboard. Patrick Ewing with 25, Charles Oakley with 16, and Doug Christie, a hard-fought 22. Damon Stoudemire with 18, so that's starting backcourt with 40 of the Raptors' 77 points. Well, Williams gets it. Down to Carlos Rogers. Looked like he lost the handle. Yeah, 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 well, Williams yeah, yeah, gets hit with a foul. Is Larry Johnson having some fun out there tonight? Yeah, Larry's having a little bit of fun. A very physical player. He's banging some bodies. This is the type of game he enjoys. Walt Williams has just fouled out of the game with just five points and two of with 11 from the field. Foul, the Raptors number 42, Walt Williams, leaves Walt this evening's game. Has done a terrific job for so many games this year. As we mentioned, he was a player of the month in February. He's allowed to have a subpar game. Yeah, again, you have to wonder if maybe he's feeling a little under the weather because he looked tired the entire game and really never got into it like he normally does. Shot on the outside by LJ, no good. He's attempted a couple of those tonight with no success, John. So as long as he keeps doing it, the Raptors have an opportunity. Just keep LJ out in the perimeter. Blame it on Grandmama. <laughs> Is she still around? I don't know. I haven't seen her in a couple of years. Stoudemire to Christie. He's open. Oh, halfway down and out. Carlos Rogers. What a terrific effort on the rebound. And he just took that ball away from the Knicks, reaching out with his left hand. Big time rebound for Carlos. Six points now for Los. The game tied at 79 apiece. Everyone stepping out on Starks. To the post, Buck Williams on Marcus Canby. A good shot by Buck Williams. The veteran, Buck Williams, making his move into the middle. Cleared himself a little space against the rookie, Marcus Canby, and just got it up and over his arm. I really thought that Buck Williams was a big time addition to their team, John. Able to get him to Portland. He's got a couple of years to hopefully win a championship with the New York Knicks. That's a travel violation on Marcus Camby. Traveling violation call. As he ran into Buck Williams. No foul call. They get him with the travel. Still moving the old legs right there. Look at that. Great job. A veteran playing with his feet, cutting off the baseline. Replacing number 34, Charles Oakley. 
Can't underestimate those cagey old veterans, John Saunders. That's why there is still hope for you, Max. <laughs> Ten yeah, yeah, we're not even going to that. Classic Ewing up. Oh, there's the guy he's been after all games is Carlos Rogers. And Carlos gets hit with a foul. I can't believe Carlos Rogers let him dunk it that easily after all the talk that's been going on out there. Carlos should have just went up there and try to, but although I got to say, Ewing had a pretty good step. But that's a situation where you're going to take a hard foul. If you're going to give up anything, it's just going to be two free throws, not a three point play. Come on now. Nick's trying to creep away and built a five-point lead. As the Knicks come with some pressure of their own half-court pressure. Rozier tries to get the circus shot, nothing doing. Carlos keeps it alive, trying to take it up. All kinds of contact. The rolls to Doug Christie. His shot's no good. And Charlie Ward gets the loose ball. Right now, for the Knicks, everybody is getting in there. You got Charlie Ward staying in there. John Starks helping out in the field. Glass not allowing anybody. Look at this. Everybody coming in. Rogers did a good job, and all of a sudden, he's surrounded by blue shirts. And Pat Ewing says, hey, remember you were talking? Get that stuff out of here. He averages almost three blocks a game. Rebound to Buck Williams. Starks. Charlie Ward comes up with the rebound. All right, New York really doing a job on the glass down the stretch. Sean is doing such a good job early, but right now, New York getting the second and third opportunities, which Charlie cannot afford to give up. Pat Ewing making a tough shot inside over Carlos Rogers. Stoudemire now finds Christie. Starks practically in his shorts. Christie lets it go and cans it. This is one of the hardest fought games that we've seen this year, without question. It really is. There's no rule for error in this game. Everybody's just grinding it out at both ends. Carlos Rogers. Yeah, keep in mind, this is one of the most physical teams in the NBA, John. New York, ball. everybody a hard time. So many officials that made them a team were strictly to be able to compete against the Chicago's of the NBA. Marcus Camby on the baseline off the feed from Doug Christie and a chance for a three-point play. Great job by Marcus Camby to free himself up. Nice look from Christie right here. Marcus takes that step to the basket aggressively, not settling for the jump shot, but realizing it's time to get to the line. Chance to get the Raptors within two. Just their 11th point of this quarter. Again, we have all these quotes and numbers that say the Raptors should be getting killed here, but they are sticking around with hustle, good three-point shooting. Thank you, John. This is a big game for New York. They're trying to catch Miami with Alonzo Mourning being out. They're trying to make ground every time they step off oh, court. So every game is important. Another huge bucket. I got you 32 points and 11 boards for the big fella. Patrick you. Oh, and a block shot. Candy gets it back. Out of bounds. It's the Knicks basketball. Simon Ewing is trying to take this game over. And Daryl Walker with his squad down by four. Trying to find a way to solve number 33. Still plenty of time left. 4-10 to go. We'll get back to Skydome after this.
when you're competing in sports, there are some basic rules to follow. I'll start with respect. Play fair. Or just don't you play. Keep your cool. Lead by example. Be proud. Accept winning and losing with class. No taunting. And always stay positive. So don't just practice your sport. Practice sportsmanship. Prepare yourself for the motion picture invasion of Independence Day. launch a counteroffensive with a full nuclear strike. Over American soil. If we don't strike soon, there may not be much of an America left to defend. Independence Day. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. That's what I call a close encounter. High school basketball action on High School Highlights. Catch the action at its special day and time, live this Saturday night at 11.30 on Empire Sports Network. You're watching Empire Sports Network. Skydome, time for our Bubblicious three-point report. The Bubblicious, the official bubblegum of the Toronto Raptors, and you can see New York, only 25%. Toronto, 46%, 7 of 15 from three. And Number 31, Star Christy and Stoudemire doing most of the damage, having seven three-pointers between the two of them. Well, Oakley with a nice pass down to Larry Johnson to Ewing. Oh, and man. cans another one over Camby. He is so difficult to stop, especially with that running shot, because he gets his body up, puts the knee up, and just puts, goes right Charles into the Charles defense, Charles and there's no way you're going to stop that shot. Six-point lead now. Stoudemire finds Christie. He lets fly with a three. That's short. Damon with another rebound. Fights his way in, puts it up and in. Damon doing exactly what the Knicks have been doing, getting that offensive glass. And Damon now with four rebounds in the ball game to go with his 20 points and seven assists. Ewing gets it back in the post. Moves on Carlos Rodgers, dips his shoulder, chases after his own miss and puts it back. Well, as soon as he dipped his shoulder, he pushed Carlos Rodgers back. So on the miss, nobody had any better opportunity to get that offensive rebound than Patrick Ewing himself. But you can see he's made up his mind to take over this game, and that's why you know, you can talk all the trash you want. It's better to let a sleeping giant lay there without talking to him. The ball winds up out of bounds, but it still belongs to the Raptors. You know, John, I want a shot clock. I've never played against one player at this level that wanted to give you any advantage. And the more you give him to go after him, the more inspiration you give a player, the more you're going to get back. You better just stay quiet, play hard, but stay quiet. The season high, as you just saw, for Patrick Ewing. Stoudemire launches to beat the clock down and out. Raptors need to stop now, down by six. Ewing again. Doug Christie got him from behind with the block. Cliff Rose here set him up. Cliff played very physical. Did not allow Pat to take a step inside. And Christie couldn't get it to go, and Camby commits the foul. Number 21, Marcus Camby picks up his fifth Well, first we have a winner in the, the Blockbuster Raptorama contest. It's La Have Resnick from Richmond Hill. A winner of two courtside tickets to an upcoming home game, an autographed basketball, 10 Blockbuster rentals, and a chance to spin on the Raptorama wheel. Congratulations to Lahav Resnick. Darrell Walker showing some confidence at Cliff Rozier to play a little bit more physically with Pat oh, Ewing. Oh, oh. Ewing and Rozier, it's getting nasty in there. Two minutes. Charlie Ward trying to create some surface shot. From the corner, Rashford no good. And that's going to be a foul on Doug Kirsty trying to step over but getting the bump on Charlie Ward. Tell you what, John, there is a battle going on down in the post. Patrick Ewing. Oh, they're smiling they're at each smiling other now. Each other. Hey, Patrick Ewing doesn't mind the effort. Patrick Ewing appreciates good physical play. He just doesn't like the jawing. 
And he said, hey, good job, big fella. You're time out. doing a battle in the post, and let's go to work. That'll show you what life in the NBA is like. A slap on the backside, a couple of smiles from a couple of guys who just try to kill each other. <laughs> It's game time. I have been a season ticket holder since 1967. Go get him. All right. Gary Payton's the greatest point guard in basketball. That Gary is great. He's my man. And Sean is so graceful that his moves could be ballet. Silky smooth. When I'm watching a basketball game, I forget about everything else. I just center on the game, and it's a very happy time for me. Good night, guys. The greatest collection of NBA players and moments are together for the first time on one commemorative home video. NBA at 50, hosted by Denzel Washington, takes you from Mikan to Magic and beyond. Relive the best passes, slam dunks, rebounds, and championship moments whenever you want. You'll experience the emotion felt by these great players for their team and their sport. Everything that we didn't have in talent we made up for in determination and just sheer will. Plus, you'll get a special bonus feature on the 50 greatest players in NBA history. NBA at 50, yours for only $19.95. If you love the game, then your love affair will never end with this special video you'll watch again and again. It's the ultimate keepsake for fans of every age. NBA at 50, order yours now. Order now. Get this NBA at 50 collector's pin as part of this exclusive TV offer. Call 1-800-596-9977. And give each other a good smile. Pat Ewing appreciate, appreciating the physical play of Flip Rose here. That is great. I mean, hey, oh, that's, that's, that last shot to the time. back of my head. That was a great one. <laughs> yeah, hey, next time, watch the low <laughs> uppercut. But <laughs> well, we saw that last year all the time with Alvin Robertson and Michael Jordan. Yeah. They play hard. They go right at each other and give each other a pat in the back on the way off the court. Again, the only thing that gets a guy going and the likes of Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson in the old days of Larry Bird is you start jawing to these guys and you take them to a different level. That's why it's best to stay quiet and just play hard like Rozier is doing. Yeah, I remember when you follow the Leafs and Tiger Williams would get into a fight with somebody on the opposing, and then they'd shake hands and smile at each other uh, right afterwards, right? <laughs> Not exactly. is now eight, and time is running down on the Raptors. So Stoudemire takes it right to the goal. Camby with the follow. Nice job, Marcus sneaking in there. And now the Raptors really have to make some ground with their press. Oh, nice dish by Oakley to Ewing. Nothing doing. Rozier changed the shot. He was looking at Rozier, and Pat Ewing did not go up strong. Stoudemire again takes it straight to the goal. Four quick points for the Raptors. It's down to four. Stoudemire, 22 in the game. Presti will get called for the foul as he went for the steal against Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson in the game, two of two from the free throw line. David Stoudemire really making a great drive right here, just taking it to the bucket. John Starks didn't even have an opportunity to get off the ground. Again, push it up quickly and get the best available scoring opportunity. You're not in a situation where you need a three or two right now. You just want to get the best opportunity. Ward doing everything he can to stay with Stoudemire. Dumps down and Canby takes it up and he gets fouled. Great job of Damon Stoudemire. Get inside, try to create something for your teammates. You want to get to the line yeah, if you can on every possession. You're not going to settle for a jump shot right now. Damon Stoudemire showing his ability to create off the dribble. Take you, Charlie Ward and Marcus Camby. See the way he stepped into that, John. That was so important. As soon as Oakley stepped up, Marcus Camby headed to that one spot to give Damon an angle for the pass. And 
it's a three-point game. Marcus having a great game, 22 points and eight rebounds. Ewing with Oakley. Oakley loses the handle, has to chase it down. Right now, there's got to be an adjustment. I'm going to say, Doug Christie had Pat Ewing, but fortunately there was a timeout call. As the New York Knicks were immediately looking to reestablish Patrick Ewing in a post, but Toronto doing a great job. Almost caught a break with Oakley fumbling with the basketball. And that's going to be a full timeout now. A full timeout belongs to the New York Knicks, and what you saw it on that last trip was Patrick Ewing trying to get an easy deuce to Oakley. He thought he had him easily, but the bounce pass got away from Oakley. Well, give Cliff Rozier some credit because as soon as Oakley caught the ball, Rozier was heading right at him, and Oakley was thinking about going up with the shot instead of catching it first, which so many times happens to players. They're thinking about the play instead of just getting that ball first and then making your move. So the Knicks have just 10 seconds on the 24-second clock. 46 plus remaining. Three-point contest. It has been hard fought throughout. And no reason to think that it's going to change over the last 45. And you talked about this matchup in the opening of the game with Doug Christie right now with the big advantage. Absolutely, Doug Christie not only has an advantage over Allen Houston in the big guard spot, but if you combine John Starks points, John Starks only has seven. So Doug Christie outplaying both. Big guards for the New York Knicks in the offensive end, and of course, always doing a job getting his five rebounds and four assists. So, Doug Christie really having a solid ball game shooting the basketball. Good percentages, too, John. Nine of 17 from the field, two of two from the free throw line. And John, you know what? Somebody we haven't talked to about in a while that is, was styling on the sidelines for many a game and now sporting a different look once again, John Tabak. Again, doing his GQ. He says if Charles Oakley can be on the cover of GQ, maybe he, I can make McLean. So, very nice. <laughs> he's been hitting Canada. Tony well, Fox said he doesn't know when he's going to be back. So the foot, although it's feeling better, he's still a ways away. We're seeing a lot of problems with that coming around the NBA this season. John. A lot of players with very similar problems to John Tabak on the bottom of the foot. What you called again? Minor fasciitis. There you go. Actually, his countryman, Tony Kukoc, has just been. That's a terrible the break reserve. for the Raptors because the shot clock was at 10. Camby stuck his leg out on the inbounds and kicked it, and so it's a fresh 24 for the Knicks. Again, the Raptors just have to continue now with that aggressive defense. Gets it in to Oakley and then starts coming to the basketball. And he got that leg out again. Starks trying to lose Sean Rasper. Block is at seven. Starks gets tripped up and a foul is called. Darrell Walker is. The call. <laughs> Doug Christie jumped up on the scorer's table. Tells you how he felt about the call. Resper, Sean Resper really challenged, got up. We see right here he's playing and looks like Doug Starks just tripped over the foot of Cliff Rozier trying to split the defense. <laughs> Daryl Walker letting his feelings be known. And Starks trying to split the D. I and mean, nobody stuck that leg out. No, but in all honesty, that call, you're not going to go. Oh, oh, that's a huge break for Toronto. Who opened the back door? Somebody close that back door. <laughs> a little breeze came through the dome. Even John Starks has to smile about this. I mean, not only was it short, it was off to the left. <laughs> and now the crowd definitely going to give it to him. in the second one. I guess they moved the rim back to where it was supposed to be. That was in a two-possession game. Marcus Canby knocks it in. Now they got to go for that quick steal. They don't get it. They're going to have to foul. 
Charlie Ward gets it up to John Starks, and there's the foul right there, Rogier stepping up. A good foul because behind Rogier is Pat Ewing. Six and that would have been an easy bucket right there, and that's number six for Cliff Rozier. I'll tell you what, John, Cliff Rozier really played a great basketball game. Six points, four rebounds, but gave a solid effort in terms of hustle and really laying the body on Patrick Ewing. John Starks back to the line, and there's the one, as I said, not just short, <laughs> but a tad to the left. Starks a 76% free throw shooter. And answers the crowd. And Dick Ravetta just went over to the Raptor bench and said, hey, settle down, fellas. All right, easy with the flag, uh, with the towel waving, just relax. You don't suppose our friend Carlos Rogers was involved in any of that, but <laughs> Carlos, what? He likes to get people excited. That's one of the reasons he's one of the most popular Raptors. So it's a four-point lead. Plenty of time left at 14. Stick around. This is going to be exciting down the stretch. Back to Skydome after these messages. The Ted Nolan Show live from the Harbor Club at Marine Midland Arena, Mondays at 5 on Empire Sports Network. To really get inside the NFL, there's some equipment you'll need. Introducing Topps NFL Cyber Cards. All the action, all the plays, all the stats, all on a CD-ROM. Each Cyber Card features a different NFL star, and there's 28 different Cyber Cards to collect. So for the hardest hitting look you've ever seen, it's Cyber Card. As close as you can get to the game without getting dirty. To order with American Express, MasterCard, or Visa, call 1-800-341-7755 or send check or money order to the address on the screen. Welcome back. Don't forget Friday, the San Antonio Spurs are in. The Raptors went down to San Antonio and clobbered the Spurs with some amazing three-point shooting. Chance to do that again. Avery Johnson, the outstanding little point guard, will be up against one of the best in the game and Damon Stoudemire called 416 872 5000 pick up your tickets you want to bring your family with one of the family fan packs next chance to do that will be against the Vancouver this weekend Raptors hoping to avenge a earlier loss to Vancouver in Vancouver this season but right now they have the Knicks to worry about four point lead for New York Toronto with the basketball. Where Sean Respert, Damon Stoudemire, Doug Christie, three point threats. But again, very similar situation. You got to get a bucket regardless. Two or three, you got to get a quick bucket, and then the same situation of steal and foul. Stoudemire gets it. Driving on Charlie Ward. Leans, gets it up. No good tip back up. But it doesn't go. Tough break. Marcus Camby really made an outstanding effort to get a hand on that basketball. Jumped over everybody. Toronto's had the tip. The ball just hit the back of the rim and bounced out. Raptors right there with an opportunity. Just couldn't get that ball to stay down. So Charlie Ward will step to the line. Uh, the fans in one year have come a long way. <laughs> you hear them all over Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward, a 75% free throw shooter, makes the first. Yeah, you know, you can tell that they've come a long way. They know the guys. They know a little background about each guy. That's right. Raptors down six, under six to go. You need a pair of threes. Can't be a let fly with one. It's off the mark. And the score, but the Raptors with a tremendous effort. They didn't shoot the ball very well, but they just played very hard and came up just short against the New York Knicks. And one of the main reasons, number 33, Patrick Ewing with a terrific night. We'll get back to Skydome after this.
I didn't grow up in this neighborhood. I'm from a small town in North Carolina. But some things here are just like home. Sure, every community has problems. But when everyone works together, it doesn't matter where you're from. So team up with your community. Even if you are the new guy in town. It's game time. I have been a season ticket holder since 1967. Go get him. All right. Gary Payton's the greatest point guard in basketball. That Gary is great. He's my man. And Sean is so graceful that his moves could be ballet. Silky smooth. When I'm watching a basketball game, I forget about everything else. I just center on the game, and it's a very happy time for me. Good night, guys. Simple game. Is he serious? Always. It's much worse than you think. We're being ambushed. Abort. They knew. They knew we were coming. Do you read me? This whole operation was a decoy. I can understand you're very upset. You've never seen me very upset. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. When I dropped off the casserole for Ed's funeral, Betty told me how tight things were. Did Ned have life insurance? Not enough. She told me his funeral alone could cost over $6,000. That is exactly why it was so important we got that extra life insurance. I wanted to be sure you were taken care of if something happened to me. If you're between the ages of 50 and 75, the Mutual of Omaha companies have a guaranteed life insurance plan that fits you perfectly. It costs less than a dollar a day, and it's guaranteed in five ways. You can't be turned down. There are no health questions. You don't even have to take a physical. Your benefits will never decrease. Your payments will never increase. And it can't be canceled ever. Call this toll-free number for free information. Review it in the privacy of your own home. There's no risk or obligation. Call today for your enrollment packet, 1-800-867-8107. That's 1-800-867-8107. Welcome back to Sky Dome, everyone, where the Toronto Raptors played a terrific game, at least as far as the effort went, but came up just short against the New York Knicks, who win the